Well, it's another great day here in Tokyo, Japan, where last night fans of this baseball crazed city got to celebrate their favorite son as Ichiro took center stage in the 2019 regular season opener. As the sun sets on his great career, it rises tonight on the latest Japanese phenom, Yusei Kikuchi, makes his major league debut in front of what will be another very enthusiastic Tokyo crowd. It's game two of the Mariners and the A's from Japan. And welcome to Major League Baseball's Japan opening series on ESPN. Our telecast is presented by Edward Jones. Konbanwa, Yokoso Tokyo A. See a few more days. I'm going to wow. be speaking a lot more words. <laughs> welcome to Tokyo and uh, good evening to you. It's game two of this Japan series as we open the uh, season with the Mariners and the Athletics. Dave Fleming, Eduardo Perez, happy to have you with us here again tonight from the Tokyo Dome where last night we saw quite a scene, didn't we? With Ichiro celebrated by these people who just love him so much. We don't know if tonight is going to be the last game that he plays, but I think the fans here are going to treat it that way. Yes, they are. They are going to treat it that way. And the fan in me that has seen Ichiro as an opponent, as a competitor, and also as a teammate, I also believe this could be it for him. But I'll tell you why. It's because of the way he goes about his business before the game today. You can see that there's some emotion. Let's see how that carries over. All right, we will see. Meanwhile, I don't know if it's a passing of the torch or not, but Yusei Kikuchi, a great pitcher from Japan, is going to make his major league debut tonight on the mound for the Mariners. What do you expect to see? Body control. It's, it's amazing to see a lot of these Japanese pitchers, when they go to the United States, how are they going to prepare, how they're going to be ready. This is one guy that has great balance on the mound, but most importantly, he also has to control his emotions because we're in his home country, Japan. We'll see how he does a little bit later. Yeah, maybe not as big of a deal as Ichiro playing here, but it's a huge deal in this country. And it won't be easy for Kikuchi. He's facing a very powerful lineup, the A's, who were third in the big leagues in home runs last year, and they hit three on opening night last night. They do, and that's one thing they do. They can hit the long ball. You get runners on base, that's one thing that they look for. And it's from line to line. That's the most impressive part about it. Watching Chapman yesterday was impressive. Davis, these guys understand how to hit, understand how to elevate the baseball. Let's see if they'll understand Kikuchi's cutter. So it's been a terrific way to start this season, and we've got game two of the MLB season here from Tokyo coming up next. A well, gorgeous scene high up above the Tokyo Dome here in the world's biggest city and one of the world's great cities. We get ready for game two of the MLB season, the Japan Series here from Tokyo. And as the A's take the field, the Mariners coming up. They are the road team for both of these games. Here is what their lineup looks like. And Eduardo, they scored nine runs last night on opening night, so why not keep it mostly the same? Absolutely. D. Gordon's been getting on base. We saw it yesterday. Edwin Encarnacion, he gets it going early on in the season. This is a guy that can carry a team with his back. And they will face Marco Estrada, who's been around for a long time, 12 major league seasons, or at least parts of them, making his Oakland debut here tonight. And Estrada's first pitch of the season to D. Gordon. Missed high with our home plate umpire Bill Welke behind the plate tonight. And there's a strike from Estrada who was signed by Oakland in the offseason Eduardo the A's we know they have lots of questions about their starting rotation and he is slotted in as the number two at least as of now coming off what was probably his worst major league season last year with the Blue Jays. It is and, and again one thing that he has battled with is balls. health. If this guy is healthy he is able he is going to be able to help the athletics early on in spring training got hurt with his back. It's really slowed down the development. He hasn't pitched in the last two weeks. So there is a major question about how long he can go, how effective he can be. D. Gordon went after that high pitch from Estrada and hit a foul ball out of play. And the key to his success is going to be his changeup. Everybody talks about it. It's a pitch that he'll throw any count. He'll elevate the fastball, especially late in counts when he's ahead. Well, D. Gordon, who had a big impact for the Mariners in last night's game, almost like he was showing a bunt even with two strikes. The count is now two and two. 
Well, we don't want to make too much about it, Eduardo, because it's game two of 162. We're very early. But the A's are clearly a contender for the division for a World Series. Gordon goes down swinging. I think that was the Marco Estrada changeup. So that's a good start for him. Ichiro waiting in that uh, Seattle dugout. He's ninth in the batting order. We'll talk plenty about Ichiro Suzuki tonight. Could be playing, could be the final game of his extraordinary professional career. Nine seasons here in Japan and 19 years if you count this one as a big leaguer going to the Hall of Fame. You saw the starting pitcher finish with his uh, warm ups as well. You say Kikuchi, he'll make his major league debut tonight as Mitch Hanniger goes after the very first pitch from Estrada. And skies one up against the uh, roof of the Tokyo Dome. Out of play foul ball strike one trying to get ahead of before he throws that change up one thing that right handed hitters do have an advantage against Marco Estrada. This is where Estrada has to now combat and start throwing a little bit more curve balls and I expect to see that this season the Oakland Athletics like to get more out of their pitchers when they bring them in from other organizations. I think that curve ball is going to be used heavily. We'll try to show you some of the uh, defensive alignments the A's will be pretty aggressive shifting. On the pull side for the right handed hitting Mitch Hanniger who goes after the second one and fouls that one out of play it's quickly 0 and 2 I just want to go back to the big picture point the A's have power they have defense they have a bullpen that could be one of the very best in the game the biggest question by far for Oakland by far is their starting rotation and they need performance from a lot of guys who didn't necessarily have great performance last year and I think Estrada is near the top of that list. Now doesn't that sound like the Oakland Athletics last season going into the season most of their starters were hurt a lot of question marks when it came to the rotation. Yes they had Sean Manea early on before he got hurt but this is a guy that can this is a team right now that has to try and figure out how they can bridge it. I mean, Brett Anderson's had a hard time staying healthy Frankie Montas really doesn't have much experience at all Hanneker ripped that one a fair ball inside the foul line toward the corner. And Mitch Hanniger, who was mostly quiet in last night's game as his teammates came to life with the bats on opening night. Hanniger has the extra base hit, a one out double. Mitch Hanniger, he became the star of the Mariners last year. And it looked like that changeup, it was not a great one. Hanniger was right on it. He was on it. He went fastball up. One of the MOs of Marco Estrada's. once he shows you up and you lay off it, then you have to be careful with the cambio. I got to learn how to say that in Japanese to change up. Well, change just, up? just give us a, just give us a few more days here, and we're we might do the whole <laughs> broadcast in Japanese. You know, we're trying to learn as much as we can. Jay Bruce takes strike one from the A's right-hander. Many of the baseball terms are basically English words with a little flair. Not all, but here in Japan, they have adopted many baseball terms that they've just sort of used the English words in their language. So it could be the change up is one of those. Bruce pops one way up there. And with that roof not totally routine one gold glover calls off another that's a good problem to have when you get two gold glovers coming together. Never knew that gold trumps platinum but in, it did right there. in this case it did. And that also was a gold glove winner at first base. Matt Chapman was the platinum glove winner in the American League last year and by almost every metric you could find was the best defensive player in the big leagues last season. So two down for the designated hitter Edwin Encarnacion. Yeah you were right gold trumped platinum. At least gold was louder. <laughs> Encarnacion who had I thought a couple really nice at bats in last night's game drew a couple walks that were part of Mariners rallies. And he goes after the first pitch. And again it's Marco Estrada that's what he does he has to be able to get ahead it's not an overpowering fastball. He'll pitch off that changeup. right handed hitters will do and we'll see that pitch a lot better than the left handed hitters. Reason being it will not run away from them it actually comes into their barrel. Anniger's got good speed he's the runner at second chance for the Mariners to get ahead. That's game the pitch. two. 
And he did go for it apparently. That's the pitch I'm talking about the curveball has to be able to throw it effectively to right handed hitters has to up the percentage. I guarantee you if he stays healthy all season that percentage of the curveball will be a lot higher than it's been in the past. Well, it worked there Ed Carnacion couldn't hold up Lance Barksdale our first base umpire. Said it was a swing now it's 0 2. We had 16 runs in last night's game. The Tokyo Dome by dimensions is a representative ballpark. It would fit in in the major leagues 329 down the lines 400 to straight away center field. But this ballpark plays small. It does. Uh, there's not a lot of gaps here. It's different for the hitters and also for the outfielders. All right, fastball and Carnacion laid off. Almost the same sequence that we saw against Hanniger went up elevated. One two count. He went change up to Hanniger. Let's see how he makes the adjustment or if he goes change up here out of the zone. Josh Fegley is the catcher tonight for Oakland. Giving the signs one two and Carnacion pops that one up. I like it went with the fastball. And Olsen will catch another pop up looking up at that roof. Yusei Kikuchi big news here in Tokyo makes his major league debut next. MLB at home is presented by Flonase Allergy Relief. Experience 24 hour all in one allergy relief or your money back. Major League Baseball's Japan opening series on ESPN is presented by Edward Jones because understanding what's important to you matters. And clearly tonight we've got a story that matters here to the people of Tokyo Japan and this great baseball country Yusei Kikuchi after years of starring in the NPB the professional league here in Japan has signed a big major league contract in the offseason with the Mariners tonight is his major league debut and it is sort of ironic that he finally makes his way to the big leagues and then comes back home to pitch for the first time in a Seattle uniform. Absolutely and the nerves. Uh, this is something you can't explain right now. But what a moment for you say Kikuchi to be able to take the field here in the Tokyo Dome place where the Tokyo Giants and Jamuri Giants are known as the Yankees of Japan. The lineup that Kikuchi will face here tonight is a powerful one. The A's were third in big league baseball hitting home runs last year hit three on opening night last night showed off a lot of that power Marcus Simeon Matt Chapman Stephen Piscotti Chris Davis who had a home run on opening day for the fourth straight year he has already set an Oakland and an A's franchise record for most opening day home runs guess how many opening days he's played with the A's franchise that'd be four and he's got four of them. So be careful against Chris Davis. First things first, Marcus Simeon. And the first pitch of his big league career is strike one from Kikuchi. And the ovation that he got when he took the field was just about as robust as the one that Ichiro got. It did. This is the only appearance he's made where Ichiro had played already three games coming into this one. The two exhibition ones and yesterday. So what can we expect to see from this young left-hander? Again, balance on the mound. Watch the double pump, and most importantly, he'll use both sides of the plate. Good velocity, not afraid to use the fastball. And the composure that he has on the mound does not panic even when runners are on base. And you figure that he might have a little bit of an advantage. Bob Melvin, the A's manager, even talked about it, where the A's have not seen him, not in a Cactus League game, not in a regular season game, obviously. Simeon behind of the count one two and there's that big breaking ball he took it. Good pitch misses middle try to get a little bit of the chase right there. Now let's see if he attacks inside. Two two is high three and two high but effective Simeon right there off balance a little bit you see him falling back opens up middle outer part of the plate. For Kikuchi to attack. Well, you know that he does not want to walk the first big league hitter that he faces. Full count, 3 2. Simeon just kind of squibs one on this slow turf. Kikuchi makes a pretty darn athletic play. 
picked it up and got to first base ahead of Simeon. And athlete to it also. <laughs> Okay, we're building our scouting report on this guy. Check. Gets off the mound well. That was pretty impressive. The ball dies on this turf. This is an artificial surface. It's got the field turf style artificial grass that we see at Tropicana Field in St. Pete, but it's longer and slower. It is, and it was just put in March 7th. Off the end of the bat. Now it's a race. The first had to divert. Didn't even use his glove barehanded right there. Good focus with all that English on that baseball. I'll take that smile. Yeah, maybe in some ways it's the perfect first result for a big league career. Have to get off the mound, get a little sweat going right away. It does not get easy though against his A's lineup. Matt Chapman, who swung the bat very well last night. His first at bat tonight takes strike one. Oh, he gets that pitch. He'll start trying to open up the zone a little bit more. Narvaez is doing a great job and worked on it during the offseason and then spring training on his framing. Omar Narvaez, a new Mariner, as so many are. This roster has had so much turnover. And he is going to catch not every day. The position won't allow that, but he's going to catch a lot for Scott Service's club. He got the call there. It's one and two. Well, we saw what he did with Simeon. He pitched inside. Here so far has gone away with Chapman. You know, Chapman is a good opposite field hitter. He's got power to the opposite side. He hit a home run to right field last night. He's not going to hit a home run here. He goes down swinging. Two down. <laughs> impressive. Good pitch. Really good impressive. Pitch. This one out of the zone appears to be right there. A strike and then too late for Chapman to make the adjustment. A little slider to go in the dirt. Narvaez switches baseball with the home plate umpire, Bill Welke. Just a brief moment, but a cool little shot there of Matt Chapman. You know that the A's hitters are going to come back to the dugout and share whatever. They uh, have uh, against a guy that they have never seen before. Same high school as Shohei Otani, a baseball powerhouse. And Kikuchi, who was a star in high school, in fact, he strongly considered there has never been a player to go straight from high school here in Japan to sign in the major leagues with a major league organization. He considered it, trying to become that first guy. Decided against it, signed with Cebu, became a star here in Japan, and at 27 years old, he's made the leap. But he has dreamed about this day for a long time. Trying to find out what's more impressive him going to school with Otani in the same high school, or Chapman and Arenado going to the same high school and winning platinum award goals. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty impressive. You are right. I don't believe that Kikuchi and Otani overlapped. And Chapman and Arenado did, did they not, for they a did year? For a year. I can't say I'm totally up on my Japanese high school baseball history. Check swing by Piscotti. He almost went. No swing, though, says Lance Barksdale. Two and two. This is where it gets fun now because you haven't faced this pitcher before. Hides the ball well. You see where he brings it back almost out of his ear. Can't pick it up. Now does he go up and elevate? He's got the little hesitation, the great balance that you talked about right from the start. And hiding the ball. Every hitter who faces him, that's maybe the first thing you hear about is how he hides the ball. 2 2. Outside. The strike zone in the Japanese leagues. By rule book is actually a little bit wider than the major league strike zone. I would say it depends. Okay, so you have more experience actually. I would facing say it. it depends. Piscotti skies one, and Ichiro is going to get a chance to make a play in right field. And why not? What a debut! You say Kikuchi, and leaning on the all-time great Ichiro to get that third out. Kikuchi, I think, wants to salute Ichiro. One inning in the books, no score here from Tokyo. 
you wouldn't accept an incomplete job from anyone else. Why accept it from your allergy pills? Flonase Sensivist. Nothing stronger. Nothing gentler. Nothing lasts longer. Flonase Sensivist. 24-hour non-drowsy allergy relief. Major League Baseball's Japan opening series on ESPN presented by Edward Jones is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Well, I thought about making the guy sitting to my left read our uh, billboard copy, but I decided against it because he is our guest. <laughs> One of the all time greats. We've been saying that about Idro these last few days. I think we could say it about Ken Griffey Jr., who is here on this trip with the Mariners and the A's in Japan and has come up to say hi to us here in the broadcast booth. We are underway. Domingo Santana. It sounds loud in the Tokyo Dome, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I mean, that one came up pretty well short of the uh, center field wall, but it always sounds great here. But it's supposed to. You know, as a hitter, it, it, you want that sound. Yeah, but when you're playing defense, no, you don't want that sound. Okay. <laughs> Let's get that. No, as a hitter, you want it. As a, yeah, mm -mm. I mean, how much of that did you did you use those uh, cues? Uh, could you hear when you were in center field? Was that part of how you were a 10 time gold glove winner out there? No, I just watched people how they came out the box. OK, um, if you like Dave Henderson, when he hit it and he you saw his hands like this, don't run. It, it's not coming back. Um, but if you see a guy <laughs> hit it and start running, you know, it, you have a chance. It, you got a chance. So that's, you know, a little monitoring right there, watching these guys, see what they do. and. Uh, it's tough when you have a little guy with a little with some pop and he hits it but he runs like that all the time. Um, you know when Ricky hits it you know he start grabbing his collar and you know don't go. Hey, don't you've embarrass had, yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you've had Ricky Henderson here with you uh, on this trip. How's it been hanging out with Ricky. Good I mean I, he owes me a basketball game. He got me when I was 12 and he uh -oh. has yet to uh, let me redeem myself. But uh, you know, I'm gonna bring some shorts this year to to the Hall of Fame. Uh, get some A shorts and the Mariner shorts, and we gonna go. Wait a second. Are we talking inside game or outside game here? Oh, he made it like a three pointer, jumped in his car, and drove off. <laughs> <laughs> when you were 12. I, yes, I am still traumatized. <laughs> Uh, Ken Griffey Jr. with us here from uh, Tokyo. We could rattle off all the accolades, 630 home runs, the Hall of Fame, uh, all the uh, All Stars, the MVP, and whatnot. Uh, well, your time with the Mariners. Now you're back uh, around the Mariners a lot. You've seen this ball club. Uh, what's it been like being around this year's version of the Seattle Mariners? Well, you know, I think you know, for us, it's just being consistent. I think um, you know, uh, just like everybody else, you have a chance if you stay healthy, stay consistent. Um, you know, the pitching is is definitely always the key in winning a championship. And like I said, if the guys can stay healthy, stay consistent, you know, we're going to surprise some people. You you had a typical. Your typical junior swing, which was a little bit of elevate. What do you call it? The E squared? E squared. Extension elevation. Extension elevation. Now you about you were ahead tangle. of your time. Yeah. No, no, no. My, my swing was really flat, but after you know getting through the zone, I was able to 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 showcase the, the, <laughs> the one arm swing. <laughs> showcase it? Yeah. <laughs> well, everybody's trying to lift and elevate now. We were hearing those uh, launch angle terms uh, all over the place. Would you have used all the technology that these guys have at their disposal? Um, no, I'm. You know, I grew up where you hit line drives. Line drives are going to get you paid. If it happens to go out the ballpark, it goes out the ballpark. But I tell everybody um, that long walk back to the dugout. There's a smash. Tim Beckham who's swinging the bat very well here and he didn't want to leave Tokyo. He had a great opening night last night and gets a two out base hit here. But that long walk back to the dugout after striking out and you got to put your helmet in the helmet rack your bat in the bat rack and then walk past your teammates and they just looking at you. It, it, it's changed because they don't even care no more like it's just an out which to us uh, uh, there's such thing such a thing called productive out. If I can get a pitcher to throw eight, nine, ten pitches, and I come back after striking out, nothing. Nobody says anything. I battle. But when you're in there for four pitches, uh, and you come back, that's not doing your team. Uh, you know, to me, that's not doing your team a, a service. He, he, talk, he talked about line drives. Yeah. I'll tell you this. In 1976, he hit one right back at me, hit me right in the forehead, and I went crying to my mom during the game at Riverfront Stadium. This was in the tunnels of the Riverfront Stadium. <laughs> I went cry. I got on that elevator. Said, Mom, Mom, Junior hit me. She goes, where'd he hit you? I said, right here. He goes, why? I said, he hit a line drive right back at me. She said, get back down there, son. <laughs> what are you talking about? Get back down there. It, you two have known each other drive. since you were how old? Oh, oh wow. Five. I, 
Yeah. Four or five. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Growing that? up around that Reds, uh, those great Reds teams in that Reds clubhouse. And you, you two were pals. Yeah, I'm still scared and of I'm, Daddy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I see, I see him a little hall intimidating. Yeah, I see him a Hall of Fame. I just slide on over. Uh, <laughs> give mom a hug. <laughs> Look at him like, hey, how you doing? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Go about my business. <laughs> no, the good, yeah. The, the good thing about growing up in that environment was we were only allowed in the clubhouse if the team won. If the team didn't win, we weren't allowed in the clubhouse. The good thing is they won a lot. You picked the, the right team to be hanging around. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, if, you know, we would be mad at our dad when they lost. That drive home is like, you know, when you do something in Little League and your dad drives you home, well, it's the opposite. Why did y'all lose? I can't believe Why you didn't did you hit strike that. Out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're asking those Why were you like, caught stealing? Yeah. Uh, that's and, great. And so, uh, yeah. Yeah. My dad struck out in Puerto Rico one time, and I grabbed his bat, and I looked at him and said, you know, I could hit him. And he just looked at me. He sent me home the next day. <laughs> you were probably right. That's the thing. I was like, oh, yeah. He's like, come get him. I sent him home. Now, we saw you last night here taking on a little different role, didn't we? You were you were down in the photographer's well taking some shots with taking what looked to pictures. be a very serious camera. Oh, yeah. Do a little something, something. So is this like a hobby or? Uh, learning. Okay. Um, you know, I got friends, uh, you know, Scott Clark, Phil, uh, Ben, you know, all these guys help me, you know, from. Wow. Oh, wow. That one sounded good. It looks good. It is gone. My goodness. Break that down. You're the analyst right now. Oh, what? On that swing. He got a pitch he can handle, and he's deposited nicely. <laughs> <laughs> Could you tell once he hit it yes. that he knew it was gone? Did you see him move? <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't have moved out there. I can guarantee no. you that. Look, the left field is still in the same spot. So Ryan Healy goes deep, and guess who's coming up? Now, I, I'm, I'm curious to ask about your perspective. You were on the third base side of the dugout in the camera well. What did you see from Ichiro yesterday from your, from your vantage point? Just a little pressing, you know. He's here in his home country. Uh, you know, it's opening series. Uh, you know, just one. This place is going to go crazy when he gets a hit. I think that's what you know everybody's been waiting on. Uh, I know we have, he has, but you know, all it takes is one good swing to get somebody locked in. Is he get one here? Yes, he should. Okay. Because because then I could be real happy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and I but and I bet more than forty five thousand people in the stadium will too. So this is you know it's one of those things you know you've got a guy who's you know played. Here for seven years eight years comes to the states. Uh, Eighteen major yeah. league seasons. I mean this is this is great. I mean this is what why we come over here and they come over to, to visit us to play. It's, doesn't matter how big you are guys can play. Well, we know that a bit each row. Bill Welke gives a strike to Marco Estrada. One of the true all time greats. He'll join you in Cooperstown. As soon as he's finished, it'll be five years from then. Yeah. He'll be there with you. Pops that one up. All the foul territory here at the Tokyo Dome is the enemy of Ichiro in that first at bat. And so the side is retired. Now, Junior, are you able to stick with us for another half inning? Can we yeah, keep gotcha. you for a few more minutes? Yeah. Okay. All right. We go. Yeah, we might even show a few of your photographs from last night. Oh boy. Maybe. We'll see. After That'll be this. good. All right, back here in Tokyo, Ken Griffey Jr. is uh, with us, and uh, you didn't take that photo, obviously, but you're no. in that photo. Right. Uh, what did we just see? Well, you saw the greatest team assembled. And it's not the guys standing up. It's the guys sliding. It's <laughs> us. They couldn't yeah. beat us. Did they no. ever beat us? I think I hit that one. Yes. Uh, did, did, yeah. Have they no. ever beat us? No, no. they never beat us. They won two world championships, yeah. and, and they never beat us. Two old pals telling stories. <laughs> 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 From the time they were five years old, Chris Davis and the A's coming up here in the bottom of the second. The Mariners with that two run home run from Ryan Healy have taken a two nothing lead. Ken Griffey Jr. nice enough to give us another few minutes. I thought it was really cool you know growing up in that generation and, and in that atmosphere in Cincinnati five of us won in the first round. Twelve of us signed professionally. I thought you know and it's in the environment that was created. Five of you like uh, five of us kids kids from that up, team. Yes. Wow. And I thought, you know, that's the the cool part about it. You had Lee Mate Jr. that had passed through there. Again, Brian McRae, 
uh, also junior which went one one uh, myself and it just continued to, to produce player after player and, and, and the unity was great and to this day we still have a mutual respect for each other well once in a while. Right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, how about that one? There we go. Ooh, look at that hair. Oh, I know. See, it's good hair right there, huh? Ooh, what happened? Windy day. <laughs> no, no, I'm talking about now. What happened now? Yeah. yeah. It got gray. I think you should grow it back. I think you should come back. Next year, you should have that. Now, well, that would be an entrance on opening day. I'm about a lot of things, and that's not one of them. <laughs> uh, you say Kikuchi, uh, one of the new Mariners. Been a lot of turnover on uh, this team. Kikuchi with a terrific first impression. What are your thoughts on what you have? Have you had a chance to watch him during spring training at all, or is this your first chance this to see him? This is my first chance. Uh, I'm like everybody else, you know, that uh, couldn't wait for him to get out there. Uh, the anticipation from, you know, the, being the second day starter, um, you know, things that you've heard about him and read and, and, and got a chance to look at some video. Um, so this is this has been good. He seems like a very confident young man the way he's carried himself these last few days with all the attention the camera flashes for a guy who maybe is a, he's used to it but maybe not quite at the level of uh, Ichiro yet he, he looks real confident to when me. He's a professional yeah. and I think that most people think that it's different from being you know from Japanese to, to American. No he is a, a professional he knows what he has to do to get his body right his mind right. And, and get ready to to go out there every fifth day. That is a good point. I mean the pressure on these guys who play here that's ball four. Davis becomes the first base runner against Kikuchi in his very brand new major league career. But uh, this is a guy who's been in the spotlight since the time he was probably 15 years old. Yeah, and, and again the one thing that you say he's been able to do is use both sides of the plate well. He'll pitch with the off speed pitch when he's behind in the count. He's not afraid. He's shown his athleticism already and he's not afraid right there to go after guys we saw him against Chris Davis attack him 3 1 fastball you missed it OK now I'm going off speed you took your you had your chance uh -uh. that's all you get here's Chad Pinder of Oakland Kikuchi misses high ball one now, am I right you were uh, still very young major leaguer were you not when you first came uh, to Japan to play with one of those all star teams I was 20 20 yeah. years old 20 years old. I don't know maybe it's just me but I have seen you these last few days with so many folks smile on your face taking pictures. I mean it seems like you really enjoy being here. Uh, yeah I mean this is a great place anytime you can come to the ballpark it's always good. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a place that you know for us is home and, and uh, you know this is like I said it's opening day opening series uh, you get a chance to to watch two guys that were born in Japan play at home the people here the battle of the bands I mean what else do you want what else can you ask I, for? I agree we have had such a terrific time here I'm, I'm sorry to see it come to an end actually I know we got to get back and get ready for the start of the full major league season but th this has been just a great experience for all of us and I'm glad that MLB does it I mean I know it's not totally easy for the players because you get out of your routine you fly a long way you come back play a couple more practice games get right back into the season I mean, it can be a little jarring I think when you're trying to ease your way into the regular season but I'm glad that Major League Baseball does it. I mean anytime you can get some some meaningful meaningful at bats and then you have a little break where you can work on some things if you need to uh, if you don't you just carry on to what you, you've been doing but uh, you know right now you know the first two days you know trying to get some at bats some timing boom play yesterday and today you get to go home off day work out work out two games boom start of the season. I'm curious to find out especially in today's game where now it's the norm a lot of shifting going on. How would you have played you on a defensive standpoint when it comes to the infield. I'd have played straight away. You would have. What? That's just me. <laughs> you asked me how I play me. Yes. I said straight away. You didn't ask me. <laughs> Come on now. No. Come on now. Think, a shift just block a ground ball. Right. We talk about hitting line drives. Okay. What if you hit that line drive in that hole? Uh, well, how many times do you see that 30 hopper go where the middle fin infielders bump each other in your base hit? And you never. You didn't have the ability to hit a ground ball the other way. I wasn't trying to hit it on the ground. 
There we go. I'm trying to hit line drive. OK. Now don't you think your opponents if you had hit a few ground balls that they would have been just fine with that. I just hit them if out the ballpark that do way. That, <laughs> OK. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to beat the shift. You can't put enough people in them seats. You can put nine the bullpen everybody spread out there in the outfield. Go. And guess what. They ain't gonna be able to catch it. <laughs> I'm not looking at the infielders. If there I'm goes the defense. The Look at the defense right now, and you hear the oohs and ahs here in Japan because you don't, they don't see a lot of the shifting. Right, there are more complete players here where they use the entire field. They hit behind the runners. A lot of hit and run going on. A lot of bunting. Not at Major League Baseball, and this is what we're used to. But right. here in Japan, but, they're but not used to that. Yesterday, you know, uh, uh, third baseman out of position makes a bad throw. Right. Air. You know, some of these guys have not been in that position where they're playing now. Yeah, so it's tough. Same deal here. You got Ryan Healy all the way over on the right, basically playing second base, like a deep second base. You can see him on the right side there. You know, it's just one of those things that 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 happens. I mean, you know, if you're looking to hit a ground ball, you know, through the infield, no, I'm trying to hit a nice solid line drive. No matter where the defense where is. the defense is at. Matt Olson, very good young hitter facing Kikuchi for the first time takes high for ball one Ken Griffey Junior is uh, with us all time great Mariner all time great player Hall of Famer you were the closest to unanimous I believe until now we finally have a uh, fully unanimous 100 percent Hall of Famer Mariano Rivera is going in this summer. Yeah we do and you know it, it's one of those things that's going to happen it was bound to happen uh, you know I've known Mo. Uh, that one. Oh wow. D. Gordon, nice play from his knees. So, Not quite in time. You know, it, it's been. You know, you got uh, Jeter coming up next, and, and uh, so it's going to be. You know, like I. Why do the Yankees have to have everything? <laughs> <laughs> Can't we just have something? You know, the, the rest uh, of us. Uh, uh, no, but he, you know, it, it's truly deserved uh, for Mo and. And, and uh, so I'm excited for what he got to say. Uh, he better mention me in his speech. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, you know, I'm excited for him. I mean, I'm excited for all the guys coming in. Uh, you know, especially Edgar, who's had to wait for so long. Yep. Uh, this is going to be great. And I, it, it is true the Yankees do have more than their fair share. It seems like, but the, the, for a franchise that has not been around for nearly as long, your Mariners have such a history of great players, superstar players. I mean, you're at the top of the list, but between Edgar and Randy Jimey, we could go down a long list of guys. Pretty storied history. Yeah, we, we try. You know, we got some guys that, you know, like to play baseball, like to get after it, and uh, you know, that's all you want. You want guys that have a, uh, a common goal, and that's to go out there and play as hard as they can, each and every day, give you 100% of what they have that day. Because there's going to be days, 162 days, you ain't gonna have it all. You know, and, and if you go out there and you battle, guys respect that. Tell you what, a couple years ago, you did a game with Rick Sutcliffe, and if I think it was John Shambi, was it in mm -hmm. in uh, Seattle, right? Seattle. This year, I'll be there August 26. You coming on with me? <laughs> Come on, you're now. trying to I'm book him you on right the spot here, right now. Come on, now. Do I Come get on. first class, or am I come find coach? I'll bring the first class. Okay, then I'm in. <laughs> you heard it, Phil. We're in. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Well, we would love to have you. That'd be great. Mariners fans, I have to think, are itching for a team to get back to the postseason, a team to be in contention. I mean, it's a great fan base up there. Oh, yeah. They, they're, they are wild when it comes to baseball. I mean, you know, uh, you, we've been on the back burner a couple years, but I think that, you know, over the next couple years, we're going to be all right. Uh, I think that's the, the one thing you need to be back in front of football and soccer. Uh, even though I like the sports, you know, I grew up playing baseball, so I'm, you know, I'm a diehard baseball fan. So, anytime that uh, I can get my baseball in, I'm good. Another strikeout for Kikuchi. Is it time for you to go, huh? or do you want you want to go, or I you want to stay? No, I can stay. I got one more inning. Okay. Go. Ooh, he's got go. one more inning. One more. <laughs> one more. Junior stays with us after this. Two nothing Mariners with the lead as we go to inning number three Dave Fleming Eduardo Perez and Ken Griffey Jr. here from the Tokyo Dome D Gordon not giving us a whole lot of time to pump him up or junior up he swings at the first pitch and pops up. I tell the new guys when they come 
and make their major league debut or first few games. Take a few pitches. Let us, you know, we want to pump you up. Tell, tell a little something about you. Speaking of taking a pitch, did they tell you to swing at the ceremonial first pitch? Yeah, that is Japanese right. custom. You, you have to swing. Well, see, I was going to set him up. That's why, I, you know, I was swinging on the outside trying to bring him on in. <laughs> <laughs> the next pitch, I had to holler at him. I love it. Mitch Hanniger has turned into a heck of a player, hadn't he? Yes. I mean, he is. He is to me. He's the star. The, the Mariners have a lot of talent still on this team, but he's the guy who seems to me to be at least have the potential to be the biggest star. Yeah, he, he's a good one. I mean, you know, they've got some guys that are going to shock you. I mean, you know, you got Jay who can hit. You got uh, Edwin. Uh, you got D. You got. I mean, you got some guys that I didn't realize Santana was that strong. Told him he was swinging the right, swinging the left, hit it to right. Yeah, he was looking to the left, and the yeah. ball went over the fence to right field. And one thing I've noticed so far, seven, uh, you look at it, seven outs have been made by the Seattle Mariners. And I think that number is going to stay at seven, don't you? That is not out. It's out of here. Mitch Hanniger with his first home run of the year, three nothing Mariners. And this ballpark is just not the right recipe for Marco Estrada, which is a fly ball hitter. Out of those seven outs, five of them have been in the infield pop-ups. No ground ball so far. The two home runs for no doubters. First Ryan Healy and now Mitch Hanniger. Mitch Hanniger joining the party yesterday went 0 for the night. I'm not sure that any of these hitters are going to want to leave the Tokyo Dome. And this is a good place to hit. Uh, yes, it is. Jay Bruce, who you just mentioned, is a guy who you think uh, has a chance to have a big year. Took a big cut to center field. Ramon Laureano under it. Two down. And uh, we keep hearing about all the young talent that the Mariners now have in the Maya. It may be a couple years from seeing those guys regularly, but it does sound like that uh, your old team has a lot of young talent in the minor leagues. Yeah, growing. I mean, you know, everybody needs to, to sometimes take a step back and, and, you know, look at what they have. But these guys have, uh, you know, the guys that are up here and, and the guys that will be here shortly are, are guys that, you know, you can build on. Here's Encarnacion with all of his power. Well, Mitch Hanniger, a great deal from uh, the Arizona Diamondbacks. Had the breakout year last year and seems to be well on his way. Everything we heard from Scott Service was watch out for Hanniger. I mean, I, they, they just loved how he looked all spring training long. That's 3 0. Oh. Again. Estrada was able to get out in the first inning against the right handed hitters with the curveball needs to throw that a lot more. And you do kind of feel for a guy who. I mean he made two starts in the Cactus League two that's it and now here he's pitching in a game that counts. And Carnacion swinging away and fouls that one out of play. Effectively wants to try to get him to throw inside and he's missing out over the plate. Yeah. But you know the thing is about you know having a, a pitcher who's a fly ball pitcher you've got to make him get him down because he lives right at that area where you can pop the ball up and that's what happens is, is you, he, you get the guy down you can hit it out you leave him up there and, and you know he's going to get those pop ups you know especially here where the ball can carry you just want to say all right get him down three four five inches and that ball goes a long way but if he can stay up top you know there's going to be a lot of pop ups that you, you know what do you say there's four right now pop ups five that, five you know just let him get him down just make him get him down and and you can do some damage. Here's Domingo Santana who did a lot of damage last night. An opening night grand slam, the first of his career. Guy hit 30 home runs a couple years ago. First year in Seattle. He's he needs to throw that ball up. No, he's he's you know belt high, which is that area where you're like, I got to get it, and he's just right above the belt. 
the game has been we've talked a lot about how the game has evolved the game has become so much about the home run ball and the Mariners last year were below average they were middle of the pack and a little bit below that even in terms of team home runs this year's team looks like maybe I oh, it's a Tokyo Dome it's two games but looks like that uh, that ranking might climb. Yeah, but you still want to get guys on base. Yeah, I think that, you know, when you can put pressure on defense and, uh, and and make the pitcher, you know, think about something else, you know, it makes it a little easier as a hitter. You know, when you have one guy on, you know, he's like, OK, you have two guys on, three guys on. Now he can't afford to make that mistake. And, and that's what the game is about is trying to make the defense put pressure on the defense. That three run homer that that. That one hit well. It's going to short hop the wall. And Carnacion, not known as the fastest guy on the Mariners, will stop at third. It's a two-out double for Domingo Santana. Yeah, but if you put pressure on the defense, uh, um, you can do some work. Two out hits, great. But the guy hits a three-run homer. The pitcher's already got. Okay, there's nobody on. I can go to work now. You know, but you get guys on and, and have that carousel keep going. You know, we're happy. As hitters, how much do the Mariners players, whether it's in the Cactus League, if you make a visit for a, a while or whatever, if you come to Seattle to watch the team, how much do guys ask you, "Hey, we, we look at my swing"? Or uh, we you, talk all the time. Yeah, I, I think you know the the guys know that uh, I'm a open source of information. If I don't know, um, you know, I got plenty of people that I can call and and, and ask questions because hitting is not about. You know, my way, your way, it's about trying to get the best out of your ability. A quick visit to the mound. You're, you're left, you were a left handed hitter. Right now, lefties have struggled against Estrada. They have not gotten a hit yet. Righties have done all the damage. What are you looking for here? He's going to throw, you know, to me, sinker, slider. Uh, I got to make him get the ball down. He's going to try to run the fastball, just keep it belt high. You know, a little bit above the belt and stay there. I've got to get him to get the ball down where I can basically drop the head on it. Well, the trend has held up in this game. Right handed hitters 5 for 6 against Estrada. Lefties now 0 for 7 after that pop up. But another run and another home run. Great to have you here in Tokyo. Thank Thanks you. for giving us the time. No problem. I'll you see know. you in August. Got it. Right. Uh, um, I'm gonna let you know my details. <laughs> uh, um, you're, you're on coach in the back. Uh, right. My flight arrangements. Uh, the whole thing. Yeah. 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 The and, Eddie and Travel and Agency. He'll take you. I'll and the you hotel. Care of you. <laughs> and the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> All these photos courtesy of the great Ken Griffey yeah. Jr. Thanks for being with us. We'll come back to Tokyo Thank after you. this. <laughs> Major League Baseball is always live with MLB at bat. Follow your favorite team's action with game tracking and video highlights along with up to the moment stats, standings, news, and more. Get the number one app for live baseball. Download MLB at bat today. Dave Fleming, Eduardo Perez. Great to have Ken Griffey Jr. with us. Thanks to him for uh, stopping by. He has enjoyed his time here in Tokyo. He still loves his Mariners. He does. And he still loves baseball. Uh, he identifies. He identifies with the Mariners and that's really good to see. I remember when I was playing in Vancouver in Triple A and I was low on bats. What did I do? Cross the border. Go to Junior. Me, he would hook me up with a big old smile, and I went back with some pretty good lumber. Ramon Laureano flips one into right center field, and he'll take it. He kind of got left out of the party last night. Ichiro cut it off before it could get into the gap, but that is the first hit given up by Yusei Kikuchi in his third inning of Major League work. Good approach right there, also by Laureano. Uh, by Laureano, and reason being, he stayed, let the ball travel. Not afraid to get jammed. Yesterday was jumping out at the baseball. Kikuchi trying to go off what he saw yesterday. Laureano making that adjustment. Now Laureano is such a good defensive player. A hit leadoff in last night's game and struggled. Dropped down to the eight spot tonight. Base hit first time up. Here's the catcher Josh Fegley taking strike one. You're going to do our uh, kilometers per hour to miles per hour uh, translation for us again tonight? Absolutely. I think that one was 146. Oh, oh he's touching 90. That's a good thing. <laughs> it's a good thing. 
uh, at times here in Japan. He would pitch in the mid 90s. We haven't seen the best pickoff move from him yet. No. He's given up a walk and now a hit. What a night for him. One of the very best pitchers in Japan these last several years pitching for the Lions of Cebu. Four year contract with the Mariners this offseason and he makes his major league debut in of all places Tokyo. He claims. Good curveball there he claims that when he signed with the Mariners he did not realize that they were opening this season in Japan it was like a week later or sometime later. And he looked at the schedule or someone told him he, he realized that he had a chance if he could earn that one or two spot in the rotation a chance to pitch here for the first time as a major league pitcher. So it wasn't the deciding factor. That one got away. One of my very favorite things about being here in Japan these last two nights the way the crowd reacts to not just big moments but right. little moments too. a pop up hit particularly high or a guy dashing from second to third on a wild pitch or that or how about just the bunt D Gordon laid yesterday where everyone just stood I mean they didn't st they don't stand here but they clap as hard as they could because they realized that it was an important moment and they value the bunt here in Japan. If you want to make fans in this ballpark in any ballpark here in Japan get a good bunt down. <laughs> yes. Yesterday there were a couple situations where back in the day you would bunt. One two is inside it's two and two to Fegley. But now we're seeing more guys swing away. And everyone would you could hear the mumbles why aren't they not bunting? they should have bunted. The A's almost never do it. The A's as much as any team in the big leagues they they do not bunt. five last season five in how many five. games did they play. One hundred and sixty three. Five times. Still two and two. So that one was at one hundred and forty one. Kilometers per hour. It's 87 and a half miles per hour right there. 146, 147. We've seen that a couple times. But it's how effective he can pitch inside, gets you to speed up the bat, and then we've seen that breaking pitch that he can throw to both sides of the plate. He's not the first Japanese born player to pitch here in Japan. Daisuke pitched, but he is the first Japanese born. To make his major league debut in his home country. He's wearing that honorary number 18. In Japan, he wore number 16, which is also a, a distinguished number, mostly because I I think of, of one pitcher. You don't know more. But number 18 has always been the number that uh, the ace of a staff here in Japan will wear. Begley flips that one to shallow right. Gordon and Ichiro come together. It's the second baseman, D. Gordon. The next batter is the shortstop, Marcus Sepien. It's a pretty cool thing to be able to do this, huh? Fernando Venezuela, who Valenzuela, who pitched in Monterey, Mexico. Javier Vasquez made four starts in Puerto Rico in 2003. He's here also. He is here. Dice K here in Japan. Were you there in yeah. Puerto Rico last year? For Jose Berrios, yes. I was there for that one also. So it was Carl Ravitch and Tim Kirchin. And now Yusei Kikuchi adds his name to that list. Marcus Simeon hitting leadoff tonight. That one got away. So we're seeing a few little signs that the command is starting to slip for Kikuchi. Who knows? Sometimes I wonder a guy's making a start like this with huge adrenaline, all the build up. You get through those first couple innings and maybe something changes. I want to see the adjustments and how he pitches to the same lineup now for the second time around. That's a good point. This is now the second time through, starting with this hitter. We saw the fastball away. We've seen a couple curveballs. Now he hasn't been able to finish off those pitches. 
He's not close to what the Seattle Mariners have him for the pitch count, which is around 80 to 85 pitches. Two zero count, hitters count, second time around the lineup. Marcus Simeon now at least has seen him. And a long way to go in this game. We saw that last night where Watch the A's the had to play from behind a couple different times. And with the power of this Oakland lineup, they can do that. They can, and Scott Service, the manager for the Seattle Mariners, he understands his bullpen is not that deep. So he's going to continue to press offensively. Close. Good pitch, though. Good, well executed pitch on the top part of the zone. Kikuchi wanted it. You saw the reaction. So now a good hitter's count for a good hitter. Marcus Simeon who swung the bat well last night. Three and one. Swing and a miss. Yeah, there's a count that you would sell out knowing 100 percent the fastball was coming with no outs runner at second. This is it right here especially knowing you got big time horses coming up behind you. Again three two I'm looking for the same thing. Throws anything off speed. Hats off. Well let's see. Three two. He did throw something off speed. He executed well. He's showing you that he will do that now ahead of the count. That's what's going to give him success. That's what makes him dangerous. Kikuchi's had three strikeouts so far, five swings and misses total. And it's that slider that Chapman saw earlier on. Then he goes up right there and then in. So he's showing different angles, different pitches, the ability to get and entice a swing and miss. That was a big second out. He's gotten a couple of pop ups in a row after the leadoff hit by Laureano. who is at second. A's trailing three nothing in Tokyo against the Mariners who won game one last night nine to seven. Oh and one. One ball one strike the count to Chapman who struck out swinging one of those uh, nasty breaking balls we saw just a moment ago his first time up. One of the great young hitters in the game against a guy that the Mariners hope becomes one of the great young pitchers. Ichiro, who is lined up to hit third, but Buster Olney, who's always up early, he's up early today and uh, already working, has passed along to us. And sort of what we were hearing was possible, but Buster has confirmed a, a local news report that Ichiro has told the Mariners he is going to retire after this game. So we think that's true now and that makes this an even bigger night for Idro who's coming up in Tokyo when we come back. Now this series in Tokyo has turned into a celebration of the great Ichiro Suzuki who of course began his career in the professional leagues in Japan was a three time Pacific League MVP one of the great players in the history of Japan came to the major leagues starting in 2001 was not just the rookie of the year was the MVP a 10 time all star a 10 time gold glove award winner 200 plus hits in his first 10 major league years the all time single season hits record a guy who is truly one of the all time greats to play this game better than 4300 hits if you combine Japan and Major League Baseball and we are now reporting Buster Olney is reporting confirming a report from here in Japan that Ichiro has told the Mariners and he didn't tell him way in advance it wasn't right. like they knew that this even coming into this series but he has told the Mariners that he is going to retire after tonight's game that this will be the final game that each role plays as a major leaguer. 
and it just I, to me it it paints this game and this night in a different light and it seems so fitting. A man who is just beloved here. He is. A man of routine. This is what he's done and what he's dedicated his entire life to. He is due up third against Marco Estrada in this inning. Tim Beckham is leading off and is ahead in the count two and one. The discipline that Ichiro has had during the season, in the offseason, the training. He's 45 years old. And he looks in great shape. He really does. That one got away from Fegley. It's three and one. And if you think about it, this is a player that's never at the major league level had to use a hitting coach because he's so unorthodox when it comes to a swing that really a hitting coach doesn't even understand how to begin to start explaining to him things. And he's never really struggled. This has been his biggest challenge now in spring training. The struggles he's had pressing knowing that the end could be near and now we're hearing the report that where he started his career in Japan now he's ending it as a major leaguer in Japan. That one sky to center field. Mariano is under it. One away. Now look we know Ichiro has he's not been a regular player for several years now. So it's not like the struggles of this particular spring training were brand new, but he has never wanted to talk about it. He defines himself as a baseball player. That is what he does. That is his obsession. That is his passion. And number 51, when you say that, when you see that here and in the United States and in the big leagues, it means all of those things. Ryan Healy, who Launched a two run homer his first time up tonight. It's very quiet right now in the Tokyo Dome, isn't it? It is. Everyone's looking on deck. Sorry, Ryan. That smash knocked down by Simeon. Nice play. His throw picked out oh, by man. Matt Olson. That's what Matt Olson does. All right, here we go. And they're standing now. I think people here yeah, no. have have heard the news. The center, right fielder Ichiro Suzuki. It's a different buzz. Well, we live in a time where that news can travel so quickly. They don't stand here in Japan. That's just sort of part of the etiquette of being at a game. They're standing now. Many of them are. It's hard not to root for a hit. No matter which side you're pulling for. It really is. Even if it came on a check swing. Well, everybody here would take it. Yeah, a lot of infield hits. Almost literally everybody who is here trying to capture the moment. We don't think this is going to be his. We don't know exactly how this game is going to play out, but we don't believe that this is going to be his final at bat. I don't believe so. He rolls one, not quite. For a moment, everybody here thought that maybe. That is the third out. We're going to see more of Idro on what sounds like is going to be the final night of his great career.
They are just packed here inside the Tokyo Dome where the A's and the Mariners are playing the second game of two the opening series in Tokyo Japan to get the 2019 Major League Baseball season started and some gigantic news as the game has gone on we were hearing rumblings and rumors but it has been confirmed that Ichiro has told the Mariners that tonight is going to be his final game that he is going to after the game announce his retirement. Stephen Piscotti hits one foul out of play. The Mariners have a 3 0 lead. Ichiro has had two trips to the plate. He's 0 for 2. He's going to get at least one more, we figure. I would imagine that something along the lines, Eduardo, of last night where Scott Service uh, sort of designed a way to get Ichiro out of the game with some fanfare, give the fans here a chance for a, a big ovation. I would imagine that something like that would be in the works. I would not be surprised if this becomes almost like a Cal Ripken type moment when he broke the record. And whether Ichiro would uh, play along with that or to what degree we don't know but everybody here would love to see something like that. We would never forget it. And you say Kikuchi who is making his major league debut a huge star here in Tokyo and in Japan in his own right. And, and it's going to be part of the story of this game his performance his major league career off and running but it's going to be overshadowed. On the ground to third Ryan Healy learning that position on the fly made a pretty good play. Well, you're not ready for opening day. If you're not following MLB on social media, follow MLB on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, that would be one way where you could follow everything that's going on with one of the all-time greats, Ichiro Suzuki. All eyes in this country are on him last night and tonight, and now even more so. Chris Davis takes ball one can't you imagine you and I've been uh, here in Tokyo for several days exploring this great city can't you imagine that everywhere around this city and around this country if people weren't already finding a way to get to a television at home in a bar with friends to try to see the final moments of his career no doubt and again I went all over different districts of Japan this morning and this afternoon early afternoon and saw so many Ichiro jerseys went to Shibuya an area there and there were so many young people wearing jerseys not only of the Mariners but also Marlins jerseys. What a feeling that must be for him standing out in right field. Two and two to the slugging Chris Davis who led Major League Baseball with his 48 home runs last year. I was at roared back on that one. He did. That one touched 150 kilometers per hour. That's okay. 93. Ooh. I think that's that may be the fastest fastball we've seen. Davis with a fast swing as he always has but popped it up. Two down. The next batter, left fielder, Chad Pitner. Two outs, nobody on. Next Thursday, opening day for the other 28 teams, and we've got three games for you here on ESPN and ESPN Deportes. The time, if you're back in the United States, will be a little bit more uh, viewer friendly. One Eastern, Orioles, Yankees, Diamondbacks, Dodgers from LA, and then the nightcap, Red Sox and Mariners from Safeco. These Mariners will kick off the full portion of their Major League schedule at home against the defending World Series champions. Pinder struck out his first time up. He's behind on the count now 0 and 1. Had a good game last night. He's going to play a lot for the A's. Underrated hitter it's 0 2. Starting to like what Kikuchi's doing against this lineup the second time around showing him different pitches. Now aggressive with the fastball in. Tries to speed you up. Let's see where he uses this waste pitch. Hit that one. 
toward Ichiro and just gliding still so graceful. And who's going to get that baseball. Now that's a souvenir 45 years old playing his final game Ichiro here in Tokyo. MLB at home is presented by Flonase Allergy Relief. Experience 24 hour all in one allergy relief or your money back. Welcome back to Major League Baseball's Japan opening series on ESPN. Our telecast is presented by Edward Jones. Just a moment ago, as Ichiro made a catch for the final out in the bottom of the fourth inning. Maybe a passing of the torch night from uh, one great star, perhaps the brightest star of all time in this baseball crazy country, Ichiro, who has told the Mariners, Buster Olney is now reporting, that this will be his final game. He did not tell us. He hinted in a way and in his own way that uh, that could perhaps be the case. D. Gordon leading off for Seattle here in the fifth inning with the Mariners leading three nothing but we are now reporting that this will be the final game of Ichiro's career and you say Kikuchi making his major league debut not his professional debut but another great star from Japan has come to Seattle. Seems very fitting doesn't it. It really does. Couldn't have ridden it up any better. Well. Needs to get a hit. That that would complete the story. Yes, it would. Fegley's got room. Lots of foul territory here at the dome. One away. Marco Estrada has really gotten all these hitters just to get that ball in the air. So far, you look at all the uh, the productive the, all the outs that the Seattle Mariners made. Not all of them. Last two were in the ground, but. The rest have been all up in the air, especially with pop ups. Six pop ups in the infield. It's part of the reason why I think the A's are betting that they can help Marco Estrada get back to high level performance. He was one of the best pitchers in the American League 2015 2016. He was really good for the Blue Jays last couple of years, has not been as good. But at the Coliseum, a, a good place to pitch and a hard place to hit home runs, perhaps a perfect ballpark for Marco Estrada to get his career turned around. Mitch Hanniger, who crushed a home run his last time up and has a double and a home run two at bats. Continue to say he better he has to throw that curveball to the righties. He can show that he throws it for a strike. If it's early in the count, it'll make his fastball more effective and also the changeup. That one way up in the air. Loriano with plenty of room in right center field. First time Hanniger's made it out and another fly ball. Laudiano's fourth put out already in center field. Well, watch every out of market regular season game live or on demand with MLB.tv. Your subscription includes MLB at bat premium, allowing you to stream live baseball on your favorite supported devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Now that 2019 is underway, real games. This is big league baseball that counts in the standings. You got to get the uh, MLB app, the MLB TV, got to get all of it. Jay Bruce has popped out twice. Kikuchi waiting for his turn back on the mound. One and one. Okay, this is a count right now where Marco Estrada usually throws that change up to entice the soft contact. Down two one count. Good eye by Jay Bruce. Now 3 1. Tough decision for him to make as Kikuchi looks along. Three and two. That's interesting, isn't it? It's 
some kind of cool gloves here in Japan. Personalize them all. Those subtle little differences. Bruce to right field. Piscotti just enough room on the edge of the warning track. Kikuchi back to the mound when we come back to Tokyo. You wouldn't accept an incomplete job from anyone else. Why accept it from your allergy pills? Flonase Sensivist. Nothing stronger. Nothing gentler. Nothing lasts longer. Flonase Sensivist. 24 hour non drowsy allergy relief. You say Kikuchi back to work here in the bottom of the fifth. He has put up four zeros in his major league debut with so much fanfare and attention on him to go along with all the attention on Ichiro Suzuki here in Tokyo. Dave Fleming, Eduardo Perez. Just uh, thrilled to be here for what has turned into a very newsworthy couple of games at the Tokyo Dome. Matt Olson taking strike one, and now the uh, Mariners change the defense up when Kikuchi gets ahead of the count the shift changes a little bit and it's even different now than it was the first time Olsen was at the plate. It's 0 2 3 nothing Seattle 27 years old you say Kikuchi a star with the Cebu Lions signed in the offseason four year deal with Seattle uh, just about everybody in the big leagues wanted this guy he was the number one prospect by far in the Japanese professional leagues the last couple of years after Shohei Otani just hides the ball really well again I've said it he's got really good balance strong legs has a very good idea of what he wants to do it's also it's also cultural here in the Japanese league where pitchers do not shake off catchers we've seen him do it already with Narvaez so he's taking charge of what he wants to do on that mound. Still own two. Every pitch is thrown with a purpose that one right there fastball up after the slider or the foul ball showed him up. After that he's had the tendency now of dropping and going soft down and away or hard down and away. That target is still up. He Stayed goes back up. up. He did. I think that's a wasted pitch right there. First pitch served the purpose. It's possible that uh, the end is a little closer now with that 73 pitch count. What did Scott Service tell us he thought was sort of the general area? 80, 85. That one is ripped over the leaping attempt of D. Gordon. And it ends up in the glove of Ichiro. Matt Olson has himself a hit. Troy, you, you go up twice, back to back, on purpose, and then throw a pitch, take an off speed pitch against Olson. Not really what you want. And the adjustment that the Oakland Athletics have made, where yesterday they were aggressive, they swung at the first pitch 12 times because they knew exactly what Marco Gonzalez would do, try to get ahead. They wanted to see Yusei Kikuchi the first time around that way because they're going to see him a lot. Same division. Yeah, they're seeing him for the yeah, first no. time tonight, no. but that will change quickly. He will face the A's quite a bit, you assume. Jerickson Profar takes that first pitch for a strike. I, I would say the, the number one question for him from folks who follow the Japanese leagues who scout all the, the people who were anxious to get Kikuchi to Major League Baseball the health he has had shoulder problems and it's not just last year where he had a few of them throughout his career he has had a hard time staying fully healthy on the ground right through the hole Olsen stops at second each row still has an arm <laughs> and everyone here in the stadium they were anticipating and hoping that Matt Holson would try to go to third base. Ichiro squared up. Smartly did not throw it. Olson knows better. He does. Plus he knows what the score is. Time run now with Laudiano coming to the plate. Ichiro. Now we'll play a little bit more shallow with Laudiano. And this immediately becomes the best scoring opportunity for the A's. First time they've had two runners or more on base at the same time against Kikuchi.
The bullpens are hidden here at the Tokyo Dome. They are behind the, the uh, dugouts underneath the stands. And we do get a chance to peek in there and now a little stirring in that Mariners bullpen. So Roenis Elias is going to start to warm up. And we'll see with how much urgency. Two on no outs for Oakland. Well Elias is a type of pitcher where you would rather bring him in to start an inning. Used as a starter most of the time you managers do not feel comfortable bringing guys in like that with inherited runners on. Now the pitching coach is going to come out that is uh, Paul Davis with an interpreter alongside. And you say understands very well English also he speaks it well but want to make sure at least that you have the interpreter there. Make sure all the subtleties are there. Kikuchi's uh, wife, we understand, is not even here in Japan. She is in Seattle helping get everything settled and ready for them to make the full time move during the season. All kinds of adjustments for players going in both directions. And if she's watching right now, if you're watching, um, Ohio goes I must to you. Ohio goes I must. Good morning. Well they even cheered that the end of the meeting. Now Kikuchi ready to go back to work. Two on no outs and a two ball no strike count. Mariano who got his first hit of the year his first time up tonight just kind of punched one into right field. Great opportunity for Oakland here. Locked them up with a little cutter right there. Thinking it was going to be middle away, it started cutting in, and you see the uncomfortable swing. See the dot? It's come in on you. That one, a broken bat flare. Just the one. Beckham caught it, was ready to try to get a double play. Rofar scrambled to get back to first. Great pitch. Broken bat, second one of the night for Laudiano as you see the splinters flying upon contact. That's big out. That's kind of a perfect example of that at bat of where in the Japanese leagues, almost certainly an eighth place hitter would, even down 3 0, no doubt, would have been bunning. No doubt. First time I ever played in this stadium, we were down 14 to 1 in the bottom of the seventh, uh, seventh inning. Runner on first, no outs. They bunted him over. <laughs> now that would never happen in the big leagues. <laughs> Foul ball off the bat of Josh Fegley. You know, you, you, speaking oh of your experience here in the Tokyo Dome, Unusually this is only the second time that Kikuchi has pitched in a real game like an exhibition game one other time. But because he was in a different league than the right. Yomiuri Giants they do play interleague in NPB. But it's only for a set period it's not many games in the middle of the season and only one time did he ever pitch in this stadium in his Japanese professional career. Ichiro staying loose in case he's got a chance for a play at the plate or play with his arm. Wow. Now, see, these are all the notes that other players that are watching the game also take notice. Runner in scoring position. What are the tendencies? What does Kikuchi do? So far, he's feeling comfortable pitching inside the righties in situations like that. So now, major league players. Second time around when they see him or even first time around they could sell out more on the inside part of the plate knowing that that's where he goes when he's in trouble. Maybe even Marcus Simeon who's waiting on deck. Maybe even Josh Fegley who's in the batter's box. Great chance here for the A's to at least get on the board. 
Two on no outs now two on one out. Bank place hitter at the plate but the top of the order is looming. Fegley toward Ichiro who will square up and make the catch. And hits the cutoff man perfectly. Are you surprised. I'm not. No. <laughs> I love the signs. You cover both bases. Absolutely. Flip it over. Again, he missed his spot. Pitch was supposed to be up and in, and it stayed away. That shows you maybe a little fatigue where he's missed location a little bit. Was able to get away with it because of the placement of the outfielder. You saw his reaction almost right as he released the pitch. <laughs> he knew it was not a perfect pitch. But as has been the case throughout the many years, 28 professional years for Ichiro, hit it in his direction. As a as a pitcher, you're usually feeling pretty good. So now the top of the order. This is the third look at Kikuchi, who has a chance to be in line for a victory tonight in his major league debut. If he could get this third out, strike one. Simeon has not looked comfortable at all against Kikuchi. But this is a ballpark where one swing of the bat could tie the, the ball game. Short porch, especially in the gaps. Kind of locked him up. Did he go? No. That's a good pitch right there. You, you said it. He locked him up. Went to that go to pitch after showing him the fastball away. Right about at what we figure is his limit. Could be that this would be the final hitter no matter what happens for Kikuchi in his major league debut tonight here in Tokyo. Simeon hits one foul, just kind of squibbed it. It's one and two. They scored seven runs last night. It's not like they haven't scored in this series, mostly with the home run ball. They are three for 15 in two games with runners in scoring position. Another chance here for Marcus Simeon. If he doesn't get him here and bases are loaded, I'd still let him face Chapman. You would. I would. Hasn't had a high stress inning until right now. Not going to pitch for a while as. This is the last game they play until they open up against the Red Sox on the 28th. One two. Tried to get him with that backdoor breaking ball. He wanted it. I think it was outside. It was. Time to go back to that cutter in. Great strength in the legs. He was a big, strong looking guy. When you stand next to him, this has been the highest stress inning by far for Kikuchi. I'm looking middle in right now. 20th pitch of the inning. It is in, but way in. Good save by Narvaez. Full count three and two. That does give those base runners the extra advantage with two outs. And a three two count. They can get the head start. Has to go to that slider. Tough decision right now for Scott Service. Do you bring in Roenis Elias with the bases loaded? Or do you allow Kikuchi to get himself out of this? He is definitely ready if need be. Mariners hope they don't have to make that decision. Here we go. Two on, two out, three two pitch, and a foul ball. How to play? Went with that slider cutter that he throws. Hey, even even Scott Service and Paul, they're, they're learning the, about their new pitcher. He he wants to keep him in even if he walks him, but he knows where the pitch count is at 89. And now you have to look at the bigger picture. How far can you push? You say Kikuchi. Another 3 2. 
Simeon rips one foul. Okay, you've shown him twice already with that with that slider in. You cannot go back in there for a strike. If you do, you better hope he swings over it and misses it down in the zone, or you can go fastball hard away. Three times showing a major leaguer that pitch after already seeing him for the third time. Very risky. Eighth pitch of the at bat here to Marcus Simeon. Right back up the middle. Hard hit, base hit. That's going to get the first run home. Olsen will score without a play. Simeon comes through. It is three to one, Mariners. And we'll see. You have to think that Scott Service is coming out, and he is. He didn't want to do it, but he is. I mean, still, I think you have to be so really to impressed see. with the way that he pitched. With all the pressure, the attention in his major league debut, he's going to get a big ovation, isn't he? Coming off the mound. Absolutely. He deserves that pat on the back. But the A's have broken through. And Kikuchi, yeah, you got to come out of the game now. A's on the board, threatening for more. Mariners go to the bullpen. A well deserved ovation for Kikuchi. Very nice major league debut for 27 year old left hander Yusei Kikuchi, four and two thirds. The pitch count ultimately got him, I think, 91 pitches, and he is responsible for two men on base. Maybe the A's best overall hitter coming to the plate. A's are on the board, trailing 3 1. Matt Chapman against. Elias, the new pitcher, another left hander out of the Seattle bullpen, making his 2019 debut. Not afraid right there. Went with the off speed pitch, change up first pitch against Chapman, gets it over. Chapman 0 for 2 against Kikuchi. And he takes that one that just misses. It's 1 and 1. Roenis Elias. Formerly with the Red Sox. That guy's got some talent. He's had some moments as a young player coming up, even as a big leaguer. Good pitch. Oh, and has wanted it also. We've talked about how Oakland's biggest question mark is in their starting rotation. I think the Mariners' biggest question mark is in their bullpen, where they have had huge turnover. Last year, 23 big league appearances, a 2.65 ERA. Not a huge number of strikeouts. Chapman a little tapper. Elias is going to take it himself. And the ball is dropped by Jay Bruce. Profar will score. It's a one run game. I don't know what happened. Tied himself up. That's one of those plays where as a first baseman you give him a good target but you know that a lefty usually throws a little two seam action at you. And the glove position of Jay Bruce worked against him. He locked himself up right here. Roenis makes a perfect throw, but the angle of which he threw it, Jay Bruce taking his eye off the baseball, not being able to make the play. Perfect. Perfectly done by Elias. Coming right out of spring training. That's something pitchers do often. Well, Jay Bruce has been around a long time. He's not played a ton of first base, but he's played enough. And that was, by his standards, a routine play. Error on Bruce. And now the A's have a chance to tie the game or more. Should have been the final out. Should still be a two run lead. It's three to two. And Scott, he was out in front. Did everything right against Chapman, a guy that's been swinging the bat well in this ballpark. Get the soft contact, and right now, Kikuchi, all he can do is watch as Roenis Elias has to go against Piscotti. Again, Piscotti uh, on the front foot, off balance. That's a Henko Sudo. It's a changeup. Okay. See, I learned that word. We're getting the uh, terminology down. 
Jay Bruce has started 33 games in his long major league career at first base including tonight. So some experience not a whole lot of it. Time to go back to that change up. Showed him fastball up. You don't have to repeat there again. Change eye level. One and two. Scotty strikes out swinging went back to the changeup. It was a great one. A hand from Kikuchi. His night is done. Mariners hold on to a one run lead. Well, we're going to cap off MLB's full opening week next Sunday with a couple of series finales. Cubs Rangers at 4 p.m. Eastern. And then our first Sunday night game, the defending uh, NL East champ Braves against, yeah, Bryce Harper and the Phillies, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Both games on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, the ESPN app. You can watch them anywhere as we cap off that first long weekend of the Major League season, which begins March 28th. Depending on where you are, one week from today. Use Merrill Petit now in the game to pitch for Oakland. The A's have made a couple of changes. As we go to the six, it's now a one run game. Use Merrill Petit was a valuable member of the A's bullpen last year, pitched 93 innings. That's kind of his role. He is not just a one hitter pitcher or one inning even pitcher. He often will soak up several innings at a time. A couple of years ago, he was phenomenal for the Angels, as you see Mark Connor now playing first base. Matt Olson out of the game. And he ran the bases, and you wonder. I, I, I don't think the A's would have made that move just uh, if everything was totally perfect. Man, was that ball hit hard right into the defense? Simeon throws out Encarnacion. So hopefully everything. We don't want to speculate, but uh, with Canna in, Olson out. But who knows? Maybe Bob Melvin wanted Mark Canna to at least get a little game experience coming all the way over to Tokyo, get his season started. Doesn't sound right to me, but you don't take out Matt Olson on that one. That's the one that started all the games last season for you. Um, hopefully he's okay. But when you're playing on turf, and remember, most of the infielders now in Major League Baseball, they're always playing on dirt more than anything. This is the only ballpark that will have turf pretty much all over synthetic grass all over the field already Toronto and Tampa Bay. It's all dirt infields hard on your legs. If the A's give us any info we'll pass it along. They're not obligated to do so but we'll try to find out if uh, there's any specificity as to why Matt Olson came out of the game. Matt Olson's status is not the big news of the night though. Big news for A's fans but the news of the night is Ichiro and he has apparently told the Mariners we are reporting Buster Olney is reporting confirming a Kyoto News report today that Ichiro has told the Mariners he is going to retire as a player after the game tonight. That, that was not planned out ahead of time. Everybody sort of thought maybe it would be perfect coming back here to Tokyo to his home country where the fans love him as one of their all time greats as I, I think inarguably the most famous most notable person in the country of Japan today. And Ichiro Suzuki apparently has told the Mariners that after the game tonight he is going to hold a press conference and announce that this will be his final game. At 45 years old. 3000 plus hits as a big leaguer That's ball four to Domingo Santana. Not quite. 4400 hits total as a professional but all time leaders for Japanese born players. Ichiro's got the most hits the most runs batted in the most runs. Matsui with 175 home runs Ichiro. I mean it's interesting you look back at his career and we're doing that we have been doing that for the last several years. But especially tonight as it comes to an end. 15 home runs the most that he ever hit in one season he did that in 2005. Everybody always said that if Ichiro had wanted to hit more home runs had wanted to be right. more of a home run hitter he could have do you agree with that. I believe I believe that. And it's unbelievable the power that he always displayed in batting practice the ability of finding barrel consistently. 
number one among all active leaders in stolen bases with 509. You think back to it was 19 years ago when he played his final season as a professional in Japan. He played nine years as a professional in the Japanese leagues. And that was 19 years ago that he finished that. He hit 387 in his final year here in Japan before he came to the major league, signed with the Mariners. And he was terrible in, in spring training that year with Horrible. the Mariners. Lou Pinella even said, if this guy hits 300, I'm going to run around naked around Times Square. <laughs> Did that ever happen? No, I'm still <laughs> waiting for that. Maybe we shouldn't be waiting for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that back. Never mind, sweet Lou. Uh, that first year when he won not just the uh, the Rookie of the Year award, but the MVP in his first season as a major leaguer, he finished hitting a cool 350. Narvaez bloops one shallow left, and enough time for Pinder to get there and make the catch. Ichiro's all-time high. As a uh, major leaguer, was not quite 387 his last year here in Japan, but close. He had 372 in that record setting 2004 season. And it's the combination of being able to place the baseball anywhere in the infield. It could be in front of the defense, by the defense. He could elevate, do so many things with that samurai sword of his. He of course broke the all-time single season hit record that year 2004. He had 262 hits and he had to hit 372 in 762 at bats to break that hits record. Looking at his bat right there while he was moving it around. Yeah. See all the scuff marks. Rarely saw that with Ichiro. Yeah he, he was legendary for how he took care of his bats. He, he had his own special trunk did he not to travel his bats he did. around. I even broke into his trunk. Uh Oh did you get when in I trouble with the Seattle Mariners. I was struggling offensively and I bothered him. I said I want to use one of your bats in one of my A.B.'s. He's like no no. <laughs> then <laughs> I went in there. Took one. Proceeded to use it hit one off the end of the bat and guess what that, what that happened. In Tampa Bay, base hit, seeing eye right back up the middle, <laughs> and he noticed when I was on when I was at the batter's box. He was like, "Are you kidding? You could see the face," and I was just laughing. So <laughs> I get the first, and I just put my hands up, and he was upset, but he wrote something in the end of the bat. And he said, "Here, it's yours." Do you still have that bat? I do. He didn't sign it though. So it wasn't a signature that he wrote. No, 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 no. Was it a uh, a word that we could say on television? I have no idea what it was. <laughs> I thought I knew Katakana until uh, he wrote that. Uh. But I will tell you this, and, and yes, he travels with the trunk, and the trunk is actually a humidifier. It's the first time I had seen that. And I had played in Japan, and I had never seen that, where everything, he wanted the right balance, the right weight to that bat. The humidity had to be perfect. 2 2 Beckham toward center field. Kind of a knuckleball out there. Loriano comes in and makes a catch. And we're going to have to wait another inning for each row to come to the plate. That'll happen in the seventh. 3 2 Mariners lead. Dave Fleming, Eduardo Perez here from Tokyo, Japan, as the A's come up in the bottom of the sixth inning, trailing down by a run. They got two across in the fifth. Chris Davis, who hit a home run on opening night last night. Leading off for Oakland here in the six on a night that was already mostly about Ichiro Kikuchi his uh, Mariners teammate made his major league debut tonight pitched well will not get a win couldn't finish the fifth inning but impressed everybody here at the Tokyo Dome but if you're just waking up and just tuning in now the biggest news by far we suspected we thought it might be the case that these two games would be the final games of Ichiro's storied major league career storied professional career both here in Japan and in the United States and now we know that to be true. Ijiro has announced to the Mariners that he is going to retire after the game. Ryan Healy catches that line drive. Every little nuance of the way that Ijiro has played the game. 
And I show that signature style. And all eyes, all cameras, all lenses, all attention has been on the great number 51. The megaphones from the uh, security officers around him. <laughs> And he's played well tonight out in the field. He's made some stylish catches. He's running around. He showed off his arm a little bit. He is 0 for 2 at the plate. He's going to come up in the bottom of this seventh inning. You could tell something was different about him also in batting practice. Just the way he went about it. He was looking up, taking it all in, looking around, acknowledging. Pressure's on. Probably one more at bat for him. That one lined into left field and that's going to be a hit for Chad Pinder and it's probably going to be extra bases Santana's arm pretty strong not strong enough there. That's a one out double. Tying run in scoring position. Change up stayed up. Pender was patient enough to see it. Not pull off it. I'll suit up for the 2019 season at MLBShop.com. Find the largest selection of authentic caps, T-shirts, jerseys, hoodies, collectibles, and more. Commemorate your favorite team at MLBShop.com. Mark Canna gets his first at bat of the season for Oakland with the tying run in scoring position. Canna, a guy who has always done well against left-handed pitching, a chance to tie the game or more. Elias featuring two pitches that can really do some damage against right handed hitters and that's the fastball and the changeup. Yes he has the curveball. Yes he'll throw it but it'll be early in counts. Late in counts it's all about the heater and the change. With all the attention rightfully so on Kikuchi especially on Ichiro these two nights and uh, coming down the home stretch tonight. This game counts. This is a real major league game. We are kicking off the MLB season last night and tonight. We got a one, one run ball game in the bottom of the six. So we're going to balance those two interests here on what will be the final night of Ichiro's major league career. You can only imagine what he's thinking about out there. I'm sure his focus is on his job at the moment, defense, but he's due up in the bottom of. Or in the uh, top of the inning, in the top of the seventh, next half inning, and I'm sure he knows it is possible that that will be it the is. final at bat of his career. He's had a lot of them, but there's a chance that we're a few minutes away from the final one. Canna rolls one towards short. Not an easy play. Beckham gets it there in time. And a good pick by Jay Bruce at first, two down. I don't know about you, but right now I'm hoping for a base hit to right field and see Ichiro make one of those famous throws of his to home plate. With two outs, you know the runner's going on contact. You figure Chad Pinder would try to score. Let's see it one more time. Kyoto News was the first to report what we all had uh, suspected and thought might be the case. Ichiro did not tell anybody. He did not tell the Mariners, even his own organization, until apparently today, sometime in the last uh, couple days, that that was his plan. If you put all of his years in Japan and all of his major league seasons together, Ichiro has come to the plate 14,830 times as a professional. 14,830. Wow. Maybe, maybe just one more. And you think that that number is big? The guy who has. Perhaps the greatest, most determined work ethic in the history of the sport. How many practice at bats? How many repetitions? Profar pops that one up. 
Narvaez hoping for a chance. Here comes Healy, and he disappears from our view and somehow makes a catch. Will it be the final time for Ichiro at the plate when we come back? Welcome back to Major League Baseball's Japan opening series on ESPN. Our telecast is presented by Edward Jones, and it has become a monumental night here in Tokyo. A long way from Seattle, a long way from Ichiro's longtime Major League home, but in his home country, Ichiro has told the Mariners that tonight is the night. He is going to retire as a professional player after this game. Ryan Healy drives one against Joaquim Soria right center field and a leaping attempt no catch in right by Piscotti Healy at second he's there with nobody out and Ichiro will come up we don't know if this is going to be the final time but everybody here thinks it may well be Ichiro Suzuki. Fourteen thousand eight hundred thirty one times at the plate Chapman playing in. I don't think he's going to bunt. Me neither. For the story to be perfect there's one way for this to end. Perfect pitch. It's 0 1. More than 4,300 hits in his professional career. Can he get one more? That was pretty nasty. Down and away. An entire country trying to make it happen. Good take. One Hall of Famer trying to capture the moment for a future Hall of Famer. has been like this but you can just feel in here the wishes the prayers strike three call. Not all endings can be perfect. Not the way he wanted to be running up. Joaquin Soria going with the off speed pitch there. Got each year off guard. And we don't know for sure that that is his final at bat. It's possible his spot would come up. In the final two innings, the Mariners are the road team. They are guaranteed to hit in the night. D. Gordon does what Idro was hoping to do. 
That's like the classic Ichiro swing and a hit right there. How many times do we see that off the bat of number 51? Not in this instance, though. Kikuchi back out to watch the end of this one. The Ichiro up to the plate. You look at it being real patient on that first pitch. He sometimes was aggressive. Knowing hunting the fastball. This time working counts. Hitting from behind. Well, Joaquim Soria is in the game. Uh, look, this is a this is a this is not an exhibition. This isn't a practice game. This is a one run major league game. His season debut. A's trying to stay within a run, three to two. Mariners have first and third with only one out. There was no grooving one right down the middle. Mitch Hanniger, the best overall hitter on the Mariners team. That one just dropped by Fegley. It was called a strike. It's 0 1. And you got a lot of speed at first base now. And D. Gordon, which has shown a lot of health through spring training in the first two games here. Very good here where last year he had that broken toe and after that really wasn't even a shell of the player that he can be. One and one. I mean, if you're Scott Service, do you? Uh, what is going through the manager's mind right now about how to handle the final few innings? Nothing's bigger than the game. He has to play it. He has to manage it according to his plan. And if the best shot is to take Ichiro out of the game and bring in defense for him, and so be it in this in this point of the, I, the, the one moment. thing I would say is I'm not sure there is upgraded defense available. Yeah. You, you have the but lead. You know what though? You're in Japan right now. It's not guaranteed if he's going to get or not another at bat. You have to let the fans celebrate his career. That one hits Mitch Haniger. Base is going to be loaded here. Well and that that is a good point in that you you as a manager OK you want to give the fans that moment that was not the moment that everybody wanted called out on strikes and a polite applause coming back to the dugout. So if you have to engineer that by taking him out taking him out of the game when he's out on defense and give the fans a chance to give him one final giant ovation. Maybe that's what he does. And I think you're right. You know, is there a better defender than him out there? Is there a better arm than him out there right no, now? I don't right think field? so. Bases loaded spot here for Jay Bruce. Mariners trying to pad their lead. Maybe if they do open the game up, does that take a little pressure off Scott Service if Jay Bruce comes up with a big hit here? Maybe it does. A little extra leeway if it's not a one run game. We're going to find out. This game has turned into something much different with the news of the day. Bruce lines one into left. Pinder will make the catch. Healy tags and he'll score. So that's a sacrifice fly. Well hit ball, an extra run. It's a four to two ball game. Good production right there from Jay Bruce just going the other way. You get the high fives in the dugout. I'll tell you what, we had that quick glimpse of uh, the Mariners manager, Scott Service. And uh, I mean, one of the true good guys in the game. He is wearing it right now. I mean, he is grinding it out, I think. It looks to me like trying to figure out how to handle this. It must be hard because you're also managing. A big league ball game. You you're trying to win. And a legend at the same time. <laughs> That's a tough one. They do already have a win here on this trip to Tokyo. They won last night, opening night, nine to seven. Guaranteed at worst a split going home of these two games. Edwin Encarnacion takes ball one. Joaquim Soria doesn't look particularly sharp. 
Encarnacion 0 for 2 has been hit by a pitch. Two and oh. You can tell how frustrated Soria is. Okay, he's been around a long time. He's picked him up and figure he's going to be a, an important part of their bullpen, which already was very good. Way outside. And they called a balk. Well, he's just totally out of whack. So wipe the pitch out and advance both of the base runners with two down. Wow, that was pretty close right there, but sorry, surprised he got called for it. Focuses on the hitter with two outs. He's he's just not comfortable in any way. Well, I wouldn't be either against Encarnacion on a 2-0 count in this band box right now. Uh, that is true. Bob Melvin hoping that his team can hang in this game, have a shot in the last couple innings. They still have nine outs of life offensively. That one not close. Three and zero, oh. and now you got first base open. Again, the bullpens are hidden underneath, but we get a, a sneak peek with a little camera, and there's nobody warming up for the A's right now. And you walk him, yesterday's hero with the grand slam, Santana coming up to the plate. Here we go. Domingo trying to make every day Sunday here. Last year he went off on Sundays. Scott Emerson, the pitching coach, is coming out to try to help Joaquin Soria get things together. Next Thursday, opening day for the other 28 teams, and we'll have three games for you right here on ESPN and ESPN Deportes. So one Eastern, we will get it all started. Orioles in the Bronx, the Yankees open for a monster year. Diamondbacks, Dodgers from LA for Eastern, and then seven o'clock Eastern, Red Sox and the Mariners. The Red Sox title defense begins a long way from home at Safeco Field against these Mariners. All three games will be on the ESPN app. And here we go, Domingo Santana, who hit his first career grand slam in last night's game. Has a chance for another one here in Tokyo. Takes strike one from Soria. Guarantee the fans are even doing the math right now with when Ichiro, if he would be coming up again, and now he would. If he stays in the game, making Scott Service's decision actually a lot easier. Santana off the end of the bat to center field. Could have been a lot worse for Soria and the A's. They are still very much in this game. Ichiro still very much in what will be his final major league game here tonight in Tokyo. Four to two, Mariners. Major League Baseball's Japan opening series on ESPN is presented by Edward Jones because understanding what's important to you matters. It has been our great privilege to be here in Tokyo. This wonderful city, this country that loves baseball, that loves Ichiro so much. And the news during the game tonight coming out that he has informed today, the Mariners, that this will be his final Major League game is now looming over everything including even the result of this game which is a an actual big league game we're starting the regular season here in Tokyo for the fifth time in history the Mariners and the A's playing a two game series here for the second time Elias has been very good since coming in for the bullpen Lariano way out in front it's 0 2 4 2 Mariners got a run in the top of this seventh inning to add to their lead a really effective changeup Elias has been throwing. Well, the Mariners may well not that he's new to Seattle that strike three swing and they may have found one of their most important relievers. They have and he came in with two runners on and was able to neutralize the situation. 
Give him a lot of credit. He's had confidence in that changeup since the first pitch that he came in against Chapman. Josh Fegley will come up here. Fastball misses. Fegley 0 for 2, his season debut as a hitter in the starting lineup. Nick Hundley caught game one. Good changeup. That is a weapon. He gets the ball. He's ready to go, isn't he? Ready to go. For the fastball change. He'll throw that curve late only for a ball down in the dirt. Another change here. That one hit. Kind of off the end of the bat. A little squibber to Beckham. Two down. I always thought that maybe the final at bat of his career was coming in the top of this seventh inning. We thought. But he is staying in the game. And the fact that not only did Ichiro hit, but the Mariners got five more up to the plate after him in that seventh inning has guaranteed that even if they went down an order in the eighth inning, he his spot would come up in the ninth inning. And you have to Assume I would think at this point that Scott service has decided that he's going to get one more shot. It's the right decision. It's the right decision. Cannot let him end his career in a strikeout looking. It, it, he will swing the bat this next time up. And we get to see him one more time. Marcus Simeon. <laughs> took a big cut there. Just for the purposes of this game and the result of this game, that extra run for the Mariners is huge in a home run hitter's ballpark against a home run hitting lineup. Elias gets the call on the outside. Two and two. Is a guy who has been a starting pitcher in his career as a minor leaguer, even at times as a big leaguer. And maybe that's what they're talking about. Um, a moment of respite from trying to decide what to do with Ichiro. Trying to decide uh, can this guy keep going in this game? On the ground, the defense playing him up the middle. D. Gordon couldn't quite get there. And Marcus Simeon beats the shift, and now the tying run will come to the plate. And the A's uh, MVP candidate, Matt Chapman. And the decision has to be made here right now. 4 2, tying run at the plate. Matt Chapman already has seen Roeni Elias once. Elias looks into the dugout quickly. But looks like he will be staying in. It's actually a good thing that the bullpen is behind the dugout. If you're a pitcher because you don't know who's warming up you don't have to worry about it sometimes you look at pitchers looking into the bullpen saying oh they're going to bring in a guy or why are you warming up a guy. Well, and the Mariners are warming up a pitcher I think that's Dan Altavilla I think. Hi to Chapman it's two and oh Narvaez oh, has a quick visit. I'm surprised also in the bottom of the seventh inning right now that Altavilla is getting up um, at this moment. I thought he'd already be hot. Again, you have eight days until the next start. This was yesterday, by the way, Matt Chapman, who went up to get a fastball and hit it the opposite way for a three run homer. He said fastball. Maybe that one was a changeup. He can hit them all. And he's ahead in the count now, three and zero. Oh. You're down two runs. Do you get the green light? Down three. You have Piscotti on deck, left on right. Right now, the way that Matt Chapman has swung the bat in this ballpark, yes, I do. Let it fly. He took it borderline. That would not be the pitch I wouldn't think that he would be yeah. looking for anyway. Three and one. I don't know about throwing him a fastball right here. He's has, he's had really good control with the changeup. See what he does. 
Went with the fastball. And it's ball four. So that may have made the decision for Scott Service. The next batter. Two on, right two here. out. Steven Piscotti. Just a little ground ball from Marcus Simeon. And it's turned into a rally after that walk with the power up. And here comes the Mariners manager. Trying to balance a lot of things tonight. And he has made the call to the bullpen. Funny how you're at the dome, you point to your own dugout. New pitcher coming in. We'll be back right after this. We will cap off MLB opening week next Sunday with a couple of series finales. We got two games next Sunday on the 31st of March. Cubs Rangers 4 Eastern our first Sunday night game. The defending uh, champs in the East the Braves in Philadelphia where it will be a banner weekend with Bryce Harper in uniform for the first time. Both games on ESPN ESPN Deportes the ESPN app you can watch them anywhere that National League East is going to be super fun this year. The American League West I believe is going to be the same. Dan Altavilla just in the game to make his season debut and he misses with ball one to Steven Piscotti the A's down two but threatening they've got two on with two out and their third place hitter Steven Piscotti at the plate against a guy who was good for the Mariners in 22 appearances last year 2.61 ERA. Piscotti pops out one foul and that will make the seats out of play one and one. Watch out for foul balls. Scotty probably happy not to see a lefty in 0 for 3 tonight against both Kikuchi and Elias. Three home runs last night on opening night for the A's. They have not yet hit one tonight. 227 of them as a team last year. Third most. Only the Yankees and Dodgers hit more than the A's last year. Scotty the go ahead run at home play that one way outside nothing Narvaez could do that one will skip into the dugout and that means that Simeon has to stop at third. That was so wild if that stayed in play and hit a, a, a wall and took a funky bounce that had a chance to get a run home for Oakland Had a chance if it's a wild throw an errant throw runners get two bases but off a pitch you only get one. Narvaez just tried to backhand this one didn't really have an opportunity to hit him right off the wrist. So it's two and one. Does he dare throw that slider again. Three and one. All right Papa. Big man on deck. That's why I say that Chris Davis 48 home runs last season already won. Three one count to Piscotti. Guy who led the big leagues in home runs last year, waiting on deck. And a very good hitter at the plate. Piscotti takes ball four. A walk has loaded the bases. This was last night. Chris Davis hit 48 of these last year. Last night got number one in 2019. And it was loud. First pitch, off speed pitch. Chris Davis doing what he does best. Hit homers, raise that slugging percentage. Right now, bases loaded, RBIs. He and knows a, how to do that too. A guy you could argue has the best late game numbers of any power hitter in the game. He thrives against bullpens, against hard throwers. No one better than him when it comes to slugging on pitches over 94 miles per hour. Nobody better. And Altavilla can run it up there with his fastball. He did not throw a first pitch fastball. He almost threw another wild pitch. And this is what Scott Service is nervous about for the rest of the season is his bullpen, the inexperience, especially with inherited runners coming in like that. If you're wearing an A's uniform and you're on a bunch of lists where it's you and Jimmy Fox, you're good. And that's Chris Davis. You saw that note about his uh, prolific offense the last three years. The, the new A's franchise record for home runs on opening day. He's had four opening days. And he's hit four home runs in an A's uniform. An A's franchise that goes back a long, long way with a great history. Bases loaded spot here with two outs, bottom of the seventh, two run lead for the Mariners, but that lead is very much in jeopardy. 
2 and 0. Oh. Altavilla cannot get the fastball over. Has struggled also with the slider right now, falling behind. This is a nightmare right now for Altavilla with that big bat at the plate. He's thrown seven pitches since coming in the game. He's thrown one strike. Davis was ready to hit. Heads up for oh my goodness. Could say that would have been ball three also. It might have been. It was borderline. This would be quite a way to get a uh, milestone run batted in, wouldn't it? 499 in his career. Bases loaded, two outs. Two run game in the seventh. Two and one the count. Right back up the middle base hit for Davis. Number 500 and number 501. This game is tied. It all started with two outs and nobody on and just a little ground ball off the bat of Marcus Simeon. It has turned into a two run game tying rally. That's what this offense can do. The middle of the lineup, very dangerous. They focus with runners on base. They've done it with small ball tonight. Yesterday, three home runs. This time on the ground. Simeon base hit. And Chris Davis, fastball up, stays up the middle, gets two. Chad Pinder, who's had a nice series, had a lot of good at bats in two games. Even that take, it looked like he was seeing the ball pretty well. Takes the breaking ball for a strike. So a milestone hit for one of the game's great sluggers, Chris Davis. Go ahead, run in scoring position. Pinder a little off balance, a little out in front there. It's 0 2. Battle of the bullpens, you do not figure favors the Mariners in this matchup. No. You have a fresh Blake Trinan that you know he's going to pitch tonight, so that's one inning. That's the ninth. Up, tied, does not matter. He will pitch. In the dirt, Carvalho's being tested. Great block right there. Whatever it takes, keep that runner from being. 90 feet closer. I know the fastball command has not been great for Altaville. He is having a wrestling match with his slider. Could say all his pitches, even the fastball, hasn't been able to locate it where he wants. The one, two. Very high. Good example there. Not even close. Arvaya's getting a workout behind the plate. <laughs> Go talk to him. Yes. Yeah. Help me out, please. Breathe. Brandon Brennan, we understand, is in the bullpen for the Mariners, getting ready behind Alta Villa, who's having a lot of problems. There he is. You got to go with a slider here. See if he can chase. Makes that block of Narvaez even more important as you look into the pen. Brennan Brennan, by the way, has never pitched in a big league game. He's next up. Four to four. Two runs in here in the bottom of the seventh on a night that will be Ichiro's final as a big leaguer. That one golfed on the ground to short. Beckham's going to step on second for the force out. And Alta Villa somehow survived with at least a tie. Ichiro back to the dugout. It's 4 4 through 7. You can stream MLB games on ESPN Plus all season long. Start your free trial now by downloading the app or going to ESPNplus.com. Beautiful scene here at the Tokyo Dome where the eyes of this baseball crazy country are fixed tonight. The Mariners and the A's a treat enough that big league baseball has come here to Tokyo to kick off the 2019 season. But with the news that has literally been passed down as this game is being played that Ichiro is going to announce his retirement after the game here in his home country. 
Well, Mar Narvaez takes a strike from the new A's pitcher that has uh, cast a different kind of spell over this one. And now we've got a tie game into the eighth inning. Advantage athletics because of their pitching. And they got their big guys lined up. Trevino, who well, made his season Ball. debut last night, he did pitch in last night's game. And what did he do? Strike out the side. Okay, so that's pretty good. Last year he was more than pretty good 69 appearances 82 strikeouts in 74 innings those numbers were even more dominant all star break thereabouts even deeper than that did not finish the year on an up note but he was a great pitcher for the A's last year strike three called so he's four for four it's just good late action. If somebody gets on base here against Trevino, which doesn't happen all that often, but if it does happen, then Ichiro will hit here in the eighth inning. And we thought that seventh inning at bat had a chance to be the final one of his major league career. He struck out looking. The Mariners had a lead, and Scott Service decided to keep him in the game. So he's going to get at least one more. Here's Tim Beckham. One for three. Singled, scored a run back in the second. Has flied out and lined out. Good breaking ball to steal strike one. So at least one more chance. And who knows, maybe this game is going to go on for a lot longer. <laughs> it's, it's tied now. Well, there have been cases in the past where pitchers have grooved a couple pitches to star players to end their careers. I don't think it's happening tonight. It has not happened yet. Beckham drives one to right field where the ball carries so well it is not a home run. It's still in play. Beckham's looking out there wondering the first base umpire Lance Barksdale I mean, he wants the Mariners to take a look we have replay in play and I'm sure that they will ask and I'm sure that we will have a review and again Tim Beckham has been on fire here in Japan hitting the ball solid every time even with the two outs he's made fastball away goes with the pitch now it has to go completely over even the rails that you see there if it hits the netting or the padding stays in hit the top of the padding it'll stay as a double. Yep. Good call. So I'm sure they took a quick look and when I say I'm sure we'll have a review I'm sure the Mariners are looking at it closely but they did not ask the umpires to review the call was correct. So Healy the hitter Mariners now have to go ahead run back in scoring position with one out and yeah even though Healy is at the plate. All eyes here at the Tokyo Dome on the on deck circle. It would take a bizarre occurrence for him not to hit now here in this eighth inning. Healy chased that nasty, nasty hard breaking ball. Oh, and two. If it is going to be his final at bat, he's going to have to do it against a guy who's got some of the nastiest pure stuff in all of baseball. Oh, two. A big chopper to third. Chapman will make sure that Beckham stays put, throws out Healy, and here we go. I would not be surprised if this at bat he goes after that first pitch. He's been taking every first pitch yesterday and tonight. The 
with an entire country watching. And finally they stand. Trevino making him wait. Almost like a golf match. As soon as the pitch is coming, everyone goes silent. It's been incredible to experience these fans here at the Tokyo Dome. It's not just the fans who are riveted, even some of the all time greats. He took it. Good eye. Pitch was down. I think he was ready to swing. Yes, he was. Can we have a perfect ending to an almost perfect career. Now he hit that one hard but foul. Well, he got the fastball. He had to count in his favor. He's been. Pulling a lot of baseballs foul something that is not done a lot throughout his career just trying a little too much. That you can understand. No doubt. Did not get the fastball. <laughs> that was filthy. Go ahead run in scoring position. Will this be the final time. He stays alive. He did not want that to be the final pitch. Hurt so many times today and yesterday fans telling him Gambate Ichido Gambate which means do your best. And he responded Gambate Mas. I will. 4,367 hits in his professional career. And everybody here hoping for one more. Just one more. And again, pulled it foul. Saw that off speed pitch. He's not going down without a fight. He shouldn't. On the ground. Can he somehow beat it out? He's trying. And he couldn't. Just not quite. And now we'll see. Is everybody here ready to say goodbye? We don't know how the Mariners are going to play this, but I think Scott Service is telling his team to hold back. So Itro is going to take his time. He may know. They want to do it properly. Get on the field, guys. Let's go. No, you let me stay. Well, the, the, the Mariners are taking the field, not just Ichiro. I mean, it is a tie game. We've kind of been thinking that maybe he would go out by himself. And that would be the way that Scott Service would take him out of the game. But it looks to me like he's staying in. So we'll take a shortened break here and come back for the bottom of the eighth of this tie game in Tokyo. MLB at Home is presented by Flonase Allergy Relief. Experience 24 hour all in one allergy relief or your money back. 
Well the great Ichiro Suzuki stays in this game and it is a tie game. The whole thing is changing moment by moment because this is a this is a big league game that the Mariners are trying to win and now wait a minute. Scott Service has come out and the Mariners players are going to gather this will be the moment. For the final time coming off a of major league field. Sayonara to all the fans here in Tokyo. One Hall of Famer hugging another, soon to be. Forty six thousand four hundred fifty one here tonight at the Tokyo Dome and who knows how many watching around the world. This is emotional. Wow. Look at Kikuchi even for him on the night where he made his major league debut. None of us will ever forget that. No.
has meant so much to every young aspiring Japanese baseball player that your dreams can come true here and then overseas at the highest level. Watch out for foul balls. And that's one of them. I'm sure Kikuchi is thinking if Ichiro had not been, maybe I would not be here. Well, we do have a new pitcher, Brandon Brennan. The game goes on. It's a tie game, four to four. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning here in Tokyo, and there has uh, been a silence that has now come over as. I think almost everybody in here is going through the same emotions that we saw from the 27 year old who made his major league debut tonight. So that is Brandon Brennan. This is his major league debut. So we don't want to shortchange Brandon either. What a strange circumstance to come into a big league game for the first time. After climbing up through the minor leagues, and he issues a walk to the first batter that he ever faces. Yeah, and he had to warm up, and after warming up, then come in after a big emotional moment. I mean, watching D. Gordon bow to Ichiro, it's It's, uh, it's just impressive the respect that every player had. I saw Gordon also walking towards second base in tears. He's always been emotional. He showed it then again. A guy who's been very close to Ijiro even in a uh, short amount of time. Franklin Barreto, the pinch runner, so some extra speed. That's the go ahead run and maybe the winning run here in the bottom of the eighth with Blake Trinan getting ready, I'm sure, to come in the game. So Barreto is the pinch runner at first. Jerks and Profar is the hitter. You wonder how many teammates of Ichiro's through the years, coaches, trainers, from the time he was a little eager through today at 45 years old would have given a whole lot to be in that line to give him a hug as he came off the field. No doubt. Profar lines one, but it's hanging. Santana for out number one. And again, in Japanese culture, you don't see a lot of hugging. And the next batter, throw that out the window. This we did not know how this was going to play out. The Mariners signed Ichiro, and with the idea that he would get to come home and play in this series. Back in his original Major League Baseball home with the, the organization that he will be forever linked with. But there was no definitive plan yeah. about whether these were actually going to be the final games for Ichiro. We thought it would be fitting, we thought it would be appropriate, but we don't get to make that decision. And Ichiro today told the Mariners officially, today was the day where everybody found out officially that. This would be his final major league game. Give a lot of credit to Scott Service the way they handled it. That one toward the gap in right center field. Cut off by Mitch Hanniger, who's now playing right. That will send Barreto over to third. The A's are 90 feet away from taking the lead. Audiano going the other way again for his second hit of the night. Pitch down and away, not trying to do so much. A lot more calm at the plate than he was during spring training and even yesterday. Robbie Grossman now grabbing a bat. This is Josh Fegley's spot in the order, the number nine spot. It will be Grossman, one of the new A's who made his debut last night in Oakland uniform as a pinch hitter and got a pinch hit. And there is the guy who was the nastiest reliever in big league baseball last year. Blake Trinan did not pitch last night. Getting ready to make his season debut and hoping that it's a save situation. Hoping that it's not a tie game in the ninth inning. 
Robbie Grossman doesn't have to be a hit here. Remember the turf is so slow. This is about the slowest playing surface we can remember seeing. A double play with Grossman who's got pretty good speed will not be easy. He bounces one towards second. They're going to try to turn it. That's one. The throw is in time. They got him. Now the A's are going to stop everybody from leaving the field. Bob Melvin wants to make sure. I thought they got him. I think it's close enough that you have to challenge this. You got to look at it and maybe you got to challenge it. But Tim Bob, Beckham. Bob Tim. Melvin said no. Keep wow. playing. They got him. So one look was enough to confirm. And Blake Trinan's going to come in the game with the score still tied. On a night that we will not forget here in Tokyo, the final night in the professional career of one of the true all time greats. Goodbye to Ichiro from here in Tokyo. You wouldn't accept an incomplete job from anyone else. Why accept it from your allergy pills? Flonase Sensivist. Nothing stronger. Nothing gentler. Nothing lasts longer. Flonase Sensivist. 24 hour non drowsy allergy relief. Uh, the new pitcher for the A's making his season debut, Blake Trinan, or strike one in there against D. Gordon, who has to get his emotions in check as he bats here in the ninth inning of a tie game. Blake Trinan, I think you could make a pretty good argument, was the nastiest reliever in big league baseball last year, a .78 earned run average. He had 100 strikeouts in 80 innings pitched, and he's ahead of the count against his first hitter of 2019, 0-2. Just hard stuff that Blake Trinan has. Downhill, high velocity with late action. Gordon hits that one to left field toward the line. And the new left fielder for the A's, Robbie Grossman, chasing after it, couldn't get it. Still 0 2. So Trinan is in. Grossman stays in and left. about this a moment ago uh, uh, the emotion was not just for the fans and now he's got a hit and we still have a game to, to play a tie game at that in the ninth inning the finale of this two game opening series in Tokyo 2019 season is underway. Gordon strikes out swinging. And Blake Trinan picks up where he left off. Just nasty. Throws high velo and then he brings this off. Good breaking pitch right there. See it from any angle you want. It's as filthy as it is when you're in the box. He's trying to get a split of these two games. Mariners, of course, won last night, nine to seven. Mitch Haniger, who has had a big game. That ball moves so dramatically. You got Chad Pinder moving from the outfield to first base. Grossman in left. Nick Hundley now catching for Fegley after they use the pinch hitter. For the starting catcher and trying it in on the mound. The A's are using their depth tonight. They are out of position players off the bench. So that's now how the defense lines up. The A's, one of the many, many franchises, just about everybody's doing it now. Valuing uh, versatility, players who can move around. Bullpens get bigger, benches get shorter. You love those players who can play in different spots. Chad Pinder is one of them. Playing the outfield, he's now at first base. This is how you develop them at the minor league level now. Haniger had a good cut. Please I still love we've been here two days and I love how you can hear the, the public address announcers both in English <laughs> and Japanese as soon as a ball is hit foul toward the stands the announcement comes on please watch out for foul balls after the fact <laughs> it, it could be a little late for 
whoever is sitting in the seat where the ball lands but I still love that they do it. And by the way there aren't many empty seats are there. Oh no. So you thought Ichiro comes out of the game maybe that would send everybody home. Uh -uh. They love their baseball here in Japan and even during batting practice this place was packed. I mean, it's still packed. Ten years from now, okay, so they announce the official attendance, 46,451. How many people will say that they were here tonight? I will. <laughs> uh, 452 <laughs> at least. Got him. Wow. There's just nothing like that. For a guy who was a, a failed closer with the Nationals, the Nationals wanted him to be the guy at one point. And it, it just didn't click. He comes to Oakland and he has done this ever since. Just different angles on the breaking stuff. The fastball is real, has velocity, it has movement, but then he spins this off and throws a variety of, of off speed pitches. One that goes across and one that goes down, the one that we saw. Jay Bruce to center field. Even in a great hitter's ballpark, not quite enough. Blake Trinan. A 1 2 3 inning to start his 2019 season. The A's a run away from winning it in the bottom of the ninth. Well, as we look back on what has been an unforgettable night here in Tokyo, you watch the scenes from before the game. At that point, Ichiro knew he had told the Mariners his plans to retire after the game tonight, signing those final autographs, going through the final warm up routines, and then saying goodbye to those here in the Tokyo Dome, to his teammates and coaches, to great players and rookies who were making their major league debuts, and to baseball fans all around the world. It's hard to articulate, it really is, we've tried these two days, what yeah. he means to the people here. New pitcher. And it's Matt Festa making his season debut for the Mariners. It's hard to articulate how much Ichiro means to not just baseball fans, but everybody in this country. You get on the subway, the video ads playing are Ichiro. You watch the telecast from our friends at NTV. And by the way, we greatly appreciate everything that they've helped us with these two days. You watch the, uh, the live telecast. Festa gets the strikeout of Marcus Simeon. And it seems like every commercial features Ichiro. The people here say take the most famous movie star, singer, rock star you can think of and add them all together. And that's what Ichiro is here in his home country. And he played that part too and he backed it up. A funky dresser. Oh my. <laughs> Here's Matt Chapman. We are in the bottom of the ninth inning of a tie game. Chapman, a little squibber, got past Festa, but D. Gordon was there to make the play. Two down. And Matt Festa has come in in a very difficult, unusual spot. And he's gotten two quick outs at the top of the order. Two down. Base is empty for Stephen Piscotti. One out away from this game going to extra innings. Festa did to make his major league debut had three stints did not pitch a whole lot about eight innings last year as a big leaguer has made the opening day roster this year get strike one to Steven Piscotti. Well, we saw what Piscotti could do with the power yesterday straight away home run center field his first at bat. Oh and two. He's one guy that would like to finish just like he started here. Good late action on that breaking pitch. Six pitches, six strikes with that kind of movement. Scotty laid off. One and two. Mariners have four, five, six hitters lined up for the tenth inning if it gets there. Target up high, and that pitch too high. I like that pitch. 
Now you go right back to that slider that's been effective. That one lined to center field. That's going to get down for a base hit. He threw it, but he missed the location on it. This one stayed right back up the middle, right by the middle, instead of down and away where he's been effective. Watch where the location where Narvaez wants it stays in. Give a lot of credit to Piscotti, which started that bat with an 0 2 count. Gets on base and a good time for, uh oh, here comes that man again, Chris Davis. Well, he's the reason that this game is tied. Davis, who knocked in two runs in the seventh inning to tie the game with a two out base hit right back up the middle. I don't think he's going to be looking to punch one through right here. The home run leader in the big leagues last year hit that one foul. And a guy who thrives in late inning situations. In Japan, any walk off hit they describe as a sayonara hit. In the dirt, good save. I, that's big. If, if it happens, yes. I'm not saying because I know the Mariner fans are watching. Uh huh. Is that the way you're going to call it? I don't. I don't know that they they have to necessarily punch up the call. No, no, your call. But I could be convinced to try that. Could be. You've been killing it right so far with uh, with your <laughs> well, Hongo. Uh, <laughs> with your Japanese. This is my first trip here. I have enjoyed every minute of being here. And I've picked up just a tiny bit, tiny, tiny bit. Maybe you studied the wrong thing in college. It could be. Well, are you <laughs> college or where else? <laughs> One and two to Chris Davis on the ground but right to short Beckham is going to throw him out and why not some extra baseball we don't want to go home the two teams are staying in Tokyo trying and staying in the game it's four to four well it hasn't only been about each row it's mostly been but not only you say Kikuchi 27 years old big star here in Japan signed with the Mariners in the offseason and wouldn't you know it made his major league debut here in Tokyo in this game against the A's and the stuff I thought was nasty it was big league ready maybe ran out of gas with the adrenaline with the energy early in the year and then this was how he greeted Ichiro and it was obviously very meaningful for Kikuchi I mean you can still see his eyes are red and swollen. What, what a roller coaster of emotions for a, a player who I mean, he's 27 years old he's been a pro for a lot of years but he's still a kid. How about that for your first outing in the big leagues you my goodness see all of that. It's amazing. Still taking deep breaths Not still thinking that. about it. Having to deal then post game with the media and then jumping on a flight to go to Seattle right after this ball game. And he will talk to uh, all of the uh, throngs of reporters who cover this sport and this game here in the Tokyo Dome. But <laughs> those folks are preparing for another story to write and report on. Edwin Encarnacion, Blake Trinan remaining in this game, which doesn't happen a lot. Over the course of the regular season, this is a little bit different. And even with the two pitches here, only 14 on the night. Tie game, 10th inning, Mariners A's. Final game of this two game opening series. Drynan gets another strikeout. So he's faced four hitters, he struck out three of them. Uh, looked like Encarnacion was looking for the off speed pitch, the fastball. Look how late he was on this pitch. Down and away, just trying to protect and foul it off. No chance this ball was by him by the time he was able to get that bat head out. Domingo Santana on the ground and that was a foul ball. It was fielded by Chapman and he threw to first but it, it hit Santana and Bill Welke made the call foul ball just a strike. 
You know they made an announcement as we went to extra innings up on the big uh, video board here about the game is now going to extra innings and the team that scores uh, they explained how extra innings works in big league baseball. We will play in, essentially said we will play until there is a winner of this game in the Japanese leagues you can have ties. Yeah. There are tie games there are time limits there are inning limits in Japan. And so we sort of chuckled when they made this big announcement of what extra innings is all these great baseball fans who know so much about the game here but the rules are different for a big league game. I think Jeff Samarja came out with an idea about a point system. See if Major League Baseball would implement it. Je Jeff had a lot of ideas. It was almost like hockey, where you, if you get a tie, you get a certain uh, you know, maybe a point for a tie, a couple points for a win, something like that. And if that would have happened last season, with the extra innings, with everything that would have occurred, yes. the same teams would have came in the same position in the American League. Now in the National League. The Colorado Rockies which played a tiebreaker against the Dodgers would have won outright the National League West. Huh, so that's interesting. And the Milwaukee Brewers would have won outright also against the Cubs. Yeah, In the minor leagues they are experimenting with rules now about placing runners in extra innings in scoring position to start an inning. After a certain point and we've even seen that in a few not every most cactus league grapefruit league right. games just end in a tie but we've seen a couple instances I think there was a game the other day in Arizona where in the ninth inning not even they, they figure they weren't going to play a tenth Santana goes down swinging another strikeout oh. for trying to do down but uh, in that uh, exhibition game in Arizona they, they placed a runner at second in the top half and the bottom half of the ninth inning just to see how it went and nobody scored and no one scored now can you reset the lineup because it works if you can have a guy that can bunt the guy over remember a lot of these rosters now you don't have that assigned guy that knows how to get the ball down anymore. You don't see it happen that much. You do not in the way that the rules are in the minor leagues and in these practice games you the the player who made the final out in the previous inning is the guy who goes out on to the base pass at second base Chapman made it look easy three quick outs for Trinan who is uh, up to his old tricks here in his season debut A's another chance to win it with a run could we have a sayonara hit we'll see four to four bottom ten. Still live here in Tokyo some scenes from our great uh, few days here in the biggest city in the world Dave Fleming Eduardo Perez and now we can officially say Ohio goes I to you wherever you are in the United States. Good morning and we hope that uh, you got to see what we have seen. We started off with Ken Griffey Jr. in the booth with us all the scenes of the great fans here at the Tokyo Dome. Kikuchi's Major League debut was sensational for the Mariners and then Ichiro playing his final Major League game a fact we found out during this game. Unbelievable I mean the events where you're playing with your hero your hero that you grew up watching and then now all of a sudden your hero is going away as he announces his retirement on the day that you made your debut. Um, what just very emotional for every fan that was in the stadium and I guarantee you also the fans that were watching. We've packed a lot in here in a couple days in Tokyo and we still have a ball game going that is tied in the bottom of the 10th inning the second game of this 2019 Major League season between two American League West rivals Chad Pinder has had one good swing after another in this series he had a pretty good cut there one ball one strike one and two now the count against Festa who pitched a scoreless ninth inning. To get us here to the 10th Blake Trinan a scoreless top of the 10th took 22 pitches to get through two innings with with now most of the time when you start striking people out you're not as efficient with the pitch count. He had four strikeouts among six hitters in just 22 pitches. 
But give the Mariners credit. I mean they had a, a few bumps in the road with their bullpen but for the most part here in these last few innings they have been able to hang with the A's in their powerful pen. And still watching for the end of his major league debut you say Kikuchi. A pop up. The roof has not been a problem here at the Tokyo Dome. Nobody seems to me has even had any sort of issue finding and tracking the ball one away. No. And there's been a lot of pop ups and a lot of fly balls surprised with all the infield pop ups that have been hit this evening that not one has hit that ceiling which is very low compared to a lot of other indoor stadiums. Nick Hundley his first at bat of the game came in for defense after the A's used a pinch hitter for Josh Fegley. Of course it's an American League game and the pitchers aren't hitting so it's not as big of an issue as in a National League game but the A's are out of players on the bench. The A's have used everybody. Hundley's got real power and he's ahead in the count two and zero. Oh. An excellent fastball hitter Nick Hundley. He went after a low fastball there and popped it up. Was Ichiro's spot for most of these two games. Now Mitch Hanniger out in right field after the Ichiro sendoff. Two down. Who's getting ready for Oakland? Is that Liam Hendricks? It is. We saw Liam Hendricks in last night's game and he was not particularly sharp. So if the A's don't score here with two outs and nobody on in the bottom of the tenth we'll go to an eleventh inning and at that point I think we'll see Liam Hendricks. Profar one hit four at bats. A new A's player long time prospect in the minor leagues young big leaguer with the Texas Rangers a guy who is expected to be a huge part of their future. Uh, he played well last year but never became that Rangers superstar. Can he can he fulfill that potential in an A's uniform. Well they're going to give him the at bats and I think that's the important part. I mean, he's going to be playing one position with the Rangers he was going all, he's playing different positions all over the place showing his athleticism. Now he can focus on one maybe the bat will even come along better. He's ahead of the count here two and one. Have to be careful with him here. A lot of success from the left side. Profar tried to get into one, came close, but not quite enough. Caught short of the warning track in center field by Braden Bishop. So we will go to inning number 11 in Tokyo with the score Mariners and A's 4 to 4. And we're back here in the Tokyo Dome as we go to the 11th inning. Eduardo, you may have to talk for a few seconds. No problem. You got Liam Hendricks on the mound now. Yesterday came into the game, struggled a bit. But this is what happens when you have extra innings. And most importantly, when you do have eight days before that opening day, you can get a couple guys to come back on back to back days. Most likely one inning. Last season, 25 games. Look at the strikeout to walk ratio 22 to 10 walks. Going to try to keep the Seattle Mariners off the board. I waited as long as I could. You did huh. I had to make a mad dash. <laughs> we love the Tokyo Dome and just about everything about it. Except for the placement of the men's rooms. <laughs> Two levels down. They're a long way away. <laughs> There are a lot of fans in them. <laughs> four to four, inning number 11. On what has been for the folks here in this ballpark and baseball fans around the world, an historic night. And maybe it didn't end in quite the way that everybody here dreamed it would. Ichiro playing his final major league game, and he didn't get the hit. To win the game or even just 
one final hit in his career that everybody was hoping for. But we are not going to remember that when we think back to this night. No doubt we're not. I mean it's. The longevity the professionalism. Everywhere he's been he's been adored. Respected. A model of consistency on and off the field. So you need five years of retirement before you're eligible to be on the ballot for the Hall of Fame. Correct. Ichiro plays these two games here. Does that mean that because he was active in these first two games he's not eligible for the ballot? Would that start the clock next year or would Major League Baseball amend it? Please watch out for foul balls. Well, it, it's it's a great question. I, I think there is a distinct possibility that uh, Commissioner Manfred or the uh, office collectively, or maybe the Hall of Fame itself, has to do it, initiate it. But I think there would be a distinct possibility that these two games would be waived, and last year would count as the final year of Ichiro's uh, distinguished career, and just start the clock at the end of 2018. It does matter to a lot of folks. I mean, there are probably how many millions of people want to find their way from Tokyo to Cooperstown, do you think? Oh, there will be. Uh, they're, 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 I will tell you that. They will there start will planning be. now. Yes. Wh whenever it gets determined when that clock starts, there are, we need to build some more hotels, I think. More houses, hotels, whatever it may be. Side ball four. Tim Beckham has had a great series here in Tokyo. He draws a leadoff walk in a tie game in extras. So we've finally broken through. We talked to Junior about it. He was the closest, had been the closest to a, a unanimous first ballot election into the Hall of Fame until now. Mariano Rivera broke through finally and did that. Derek Jeter, I think it is, well, is it safe to assume that he's going to be unanimous also? It's pretty safe. I, I would think now that we've busted through that that is likely to happen. Could Ichiro do it? Could Ichiro do it? Absolutely. I mean, how could you look at his body of work and uh, and think that he's not a Hall of Famer? Absolutely, he can do it. I think Ichiro has a better chance than Derek Jeter. Really? Yeah. I really do. And do you have a particular reason for that or no I just I just think again with. The that one. I think he broke his bat to short that's one and that's two double play beautifully turned. That right there was a rule changed double play back in the day jerks and pro far as a second baseman would not would have to maneuver and get out of the way and use footwork. Watch right here that bat breaks. The feed is a good one but he stays there. Oh man back in the day you see that. You know where the shortstop or the second baseman is in that area and you go right after him to make sure he does not make that throw. You and Junior were talking about growing up around those uh, big red machine reds and all the great players you mentioned Brian McKay one of the Brian McRae one of the oh, kids who was father. around his dad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the rule change was made for him in some ways. Now, Braden Bishop is uh, a big leaguer now. This is a big moment for him. The guy who's climbed up through the minor leagues, had a great spring training. Third round pick back in 2015. And he is making his major league debut. He's already had a couple innings in the field. This is his first big league at bat here in Tokyo. He's behind in the count, 0 and 2. Strike three called. We will go to the bottom of the 11th. Yeah, it's the big leagues, kid. Come on. 
Well, we don't have to say get up. They've been up. Mike Greenberg, Laura Rutledge, Jay Will, I'm sure there to help get ready for the NCAA tournament, which starts now in just a few hours. When we are finished here in Tokyo, we will send it to another one of the world's great cities, New York City, where our friends are standing by uh, for Get Up. When we are finished here, the Major League Baseball season opening here in Tokyo and the great career of Ichiro Suzuki closing tonight. He announced, and he was officially announced it, but he told the Mariners that this would be his final game, and it started from the pregame warm-ups, got the final send-off in front of uh, all these fans at the Tokyo Dome from his teammates, from the young Japanese native who made his Major League debut, and from a great Hall of Famer, from one to another, Ichiro has said goodbye. Zach Ross Cup now in the game for the Mariners on the mound. Four to four, bottom of the 11th. Dave Fleming, Eduardo Perez from Tokyo. These teams will head home. Ultimately, we will head home and get ready for the start of the full Major League season. And that comes up in a week. It does. Creeping up on us as it's going to be a long trip for one of these two teams that go extra innings and don't get the victory. But looking forward to it. By the way, you mentioned the brackets. You have yours done? I do. I do. I use the uh, ESPN app, the what, what's it called, the Tournament Challenge app to create my bracket. Mariano goes down swinging against Roscoe. <laughs> I don't know if I should reveal my uh, you think I should reveal my uh, picks here before the tournament tips off. Usually you kind of wait until the first game starts and then tell everybody. <laughs> so you're going to reveal it. huh? My final four was sort of chalkish if you know what I mean. Duke Michigan Tennessee North Carolina. Oh wow that's a. You're going out on a limb, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, way out there. I mean, were there any surprises in your Elite Eight or something like that or no? You don't have to say which ones they are. I'm just saying yes or no. I picked a Duke Carolina National Championship game. Wouldn't oh, that wow. be something? ACC. Hmm. And I picked a Tar Heels National Championship because I know America wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> the MLB office, you know, they've got this uh, giant operation here for these uh, two games. They printed like close to 200 brackets this morning for everybody to fill out and look at and make their picks. And so everybody here in the spirit of things, even though it feels like we are a long way away <laughs> from the NCAA tournament. Grossman chases one in the dirt. Well, Zach Roscoff, I'm telling you right now, he is throwing that slider down. And then on right handed hitters and they're just chasing that bad boy. This is the big problem in extra innings. Already the hitters. Are looking at launch angle they're looking to elevate the baseball. That's their natural swing these days now they're really trying to do it. Next thing you know you get up under one and or you'll, you'll get even more swings and misses. A lot of pop ups a lot of fly balls the last five outs have been in the air or strikeouts. For the athletics. Four to four here in the bottom of the 11th. We have had extra inning baseball several different times when the major leagues has come to Japan. This is the fifth opening series in Japan. Simeon toward right center field. It's going to short hop. Hanniger picked it clean. That's important, but couldn't make the catch. It's a risky play right there. You have to be 100% sure you're going to make that play. If not, take it on the big bounce. Got lucky. That ball gets by him. That's a triple. Typically, in this kind of situation, two outs, tie game, late game kind of situation, an outfielder will be much more conservative on that. Not Mitch Hanniger, and he made the play. So now Simeon, the running game is not a big part of the A's offense. This guy is Matt Chapman. Could he send us home? Oh, he has the power to do it. The outfield is playing no doubles. 
Domingo Santana in left field is pretty much one step away from the warning track. That's as deep as you can be, basically. 2 0. Oh. Corners. Third baseman also covering the corner. You know, it's hard to blame Zach Roscup for being extra, extra careful here with Matt Chapman. The problem is if you walk him, then you're a base hit away, probably, from losing the game. Simeon, the winning run at first, 2 0. Oh. Not close, 3 0. Oh. Well, what happens in this situation is catchers want the pitch away to make the hitter earn it to the opposite field. I don't want them to get anything they can pull and hit it out. Roscup trying to stay away from that middle area, trying to get too fine, has missed three times. Not swinging, 3 0, taking, it's 3 and 1. Chapman takes the walk. So now we do have the winning run in scoring position. Chapman has walked for the second time tonight. Marcus Simeon's got plenty of speed. You figure running on contact with two outs to score on any base hit to the outfield. No doubt. You have some good arms out there for the Mariners. But uh, you would think with Simeon's speed that would not be enough. We'll see. Steven Piscotti. Could he be the hero for the A's tonight? One for four, a single, and a walk also. Hit a home run in his first at bat of the year last night. The A's have not had much success in these kind of at bats in this game or in this series. That one is low. Now you figure, again, it's a, a similar kind of situation where Ross Cup is up against it. Seeing those uh, outfielders for the Mariners, Santana and Bishop and Hanniger, because you got the, the home run leader from last year in the big leagues on deck. I mean, Piscotti is in a position to get something to hit. Top that one foul. It's one and one. Got good feel that slider. All it takes is a base hit for Piscotti to drive in Simeon at second. Almost like we're at the Coliseum for a moment. So let's go Oakland cheers from the A's fans. The A's fans are here in pretty good numbers. Two and one. Even looks like the Coliseum <laughs> if you block out the roof and the artificial turf. Three and one. You can hear the ooze as the pressure builds. Zach Roscup got the first two hitters just like that. Isn't it amazing what one hit can do in a tie game? Marcus Simeon punches a base hit to right field. 3 1. That is a strike. Very borderline, but called a strike by Bill Welke. 3 and 2. I like the call again, Narvaez working that outside corner, getting the call, working on his metrics. Can he hit that spot again? Or maybe go, go back the to the breaking ball. And a big man on deck. 3 2. Runners go. It's ball four. Not close. And now there's nowhere to put Chris Davis. A walk would end the game. I'm telling you right now, Chris Davis saw that pitch selection that they went with the slider. And you start, you take it a little personal. That's a little bit of an incentive saying, oh, really? You're going to throw the slider because you want to face me. Okay. Tough situation right here for Zach on the mound. Very tough. Because Davis has hit two career grand slams. 
We had a quick shot of uh, that was Dave Cavill who had the, uh, the the camera phone out. The president of the A's taking pictures of the scene. A's brought a big a big contingent of folks. So did the Mariners. In the 11th inning from Tokyo, four to four, the A's tied it in the seventh on a Chris Davis base hit, a two out, two run single. Now Davis trying to end it and send the A's back to California. He went after that first pitch and did not get a fastball, topped it foul, strike one. Two. Good pitch. Get him chase right there. Late break. Now he has to be careful because Zach might want to repeat that pitch. Not if he tries to be perfect, it could get in the dirt, put a lot of pressure on Narvaez. Simeon has to be alert at third. Ready to go on anything that gets by the catcher to try to win the game. He got him swinging. Zach Ross Cup, what a performance. Bases were loaded. The home run leader from last year in the big leagues goes down swinging. We go to the 12th. Well, next Thursday is opening day for the other 28 teams and sort of a second opening day for these two. And we've got three games for you right here on ESPN. Orioles, Yankees at 1 Eastern, Diamondbacks, Dodgers from L.A., Red Sox, Mariners, 7 Eastern caps it off. Sox. Start to defend their World Series title, all available on the ESPN app on Thursday. Ryan Bookter takes over. D. Gordon, first pitch swinging, a pop up. Matt Chapman couldn't quite get there. So Bookter is into the game for the A's. Should we count the A's pitchers who have appeared here tonight? Estrada, Petit, Soria, Trevino, Trinan, Hendricks, and now Bookter. Seventh pitcher of the game for Oakland. We're in the twelfth here from Tokyo. The final game of this two-game opening series in Japan. Gordon, who could be a huge factor in a tie game, leading off an inning. This is the exact spot where you'd like to have him try to get on base and use his speed. He's had really good at bats so far in Japan. Yesterday hit a couple on the barrel. Has one hit in this game. And if you're just joining us on the West Coast, we have, this game is now four hours old here in Tokyo. So we started at 2.30 a.m. in the morning Pacific time for the local fans of the A's and the Mariners. It's rush hour now. Gordon, line drive base hit. Listen to how many fans are still here in Tokyo. Ichiro has come out of the game, had his career send off tonight Mitch Hanniger comes up now and we'll see if he takes a pitch or two or three and gives D Gordon a chance to get himself into scoring position and this is going to be interesting for the Japanese fans as we look at that replay right back up the middle they're used to the bunt here this is a hundred percent bunt opportunity especially from the two hole hitter you're not going to see this from Mitch Hanniger what a night it's been for D Gordon he you know him real well he gets emotional doesn't he. He does he does and he shows up when he's emotional. Remember when the late Jose Fernandez when he passed first game back Marlins on the field lead off home run for D Gordon cried running around the bases. One of the fastest players in the world. He is the go ahead run aboard with nobody out in the 12th inning of a tie game. Mariners have their best hitter at the plate, Mitch Hanniger. He went after that one. It's one and one. You do have the left handed pitcher on the mound in Ryan Bookter. Mitch Hanniger, who already in this game has gone deep. He's got a double and did this in the third inning. His first home run, we assume, of many in 2019. 
He was kind of the one guy who was left out last night. Close. But D. Gordon got back in time. We made sure of it in his first two at bats the double, then the home run. The game within the game. Will D. Gordon take off? Maybe a little extra longer lead. Not going here. That one almost got away. Good play by Nick Hundley. Good thing with D. Gordon at first base, you're forcing Bookter not only to lose a little bit of the focus off a really good hitter in Mitch Hanniger, but also to go and use that fastball. Power of speed. Doesn't have to just come in a straight steal. Two and one. And they're going to throw over again. I don't know. I thought Gordon might have been leaning that time. This team's going to create chaos during the regular season. Gordon with his speed, healthy now with that toe that was broken last season. Then you got Maddox Smith that should be rejoining the Seattle Mariners once they get back to Seattle. 40 stolen bases for Maddox last season. Two and one. Now Ricky Henderson is here. He has been here with the A's this whole week. And Ricky, wherever he is in the ballpark right now, is thinking, you got to go. Tie game, 12th inning, you're a base stealer. This is the spot to steal one. Of course, now it's three and one to your best hitter. Ricky would have been gone. Back. One thing that you can focus on on Butcher watch from our center field camera vantage point his left toe again the front part of the shoe if it comes up he's going to first if he digs it down it stays down he goes home hard to see from that angle but from this angle right here watch that left toe. See how he moves it before he even goes to first. He won't do that when he goes home. You don't hear a lot of boos here in Japan. They're getting a little cranky, a little antsy. Subway system shut down at all here? I don't think so. I do not believe so. No. So they're not worried. They can make it home. Quick meeting with Nick Hundley and Ryan Bookter. You have the adjustment to the uh, visits rule. Of course, every team gets an extra one each extra inning that gets played. Nobody has threatened that limit in these two games. The teams get now five each game. 3 1. That's ball four. So he didn't have to steal. Maybe you're right. Just the thought, just the idea, just the threat affected Ryan Bookter. As now that go ahead run is in scoring position. And even though you have your third place hitter up, it's a left handed hitter, Jay Bruce, against a tough lefty, a guy who can be real tough on lefties. This is a spot where I would bet that Scott Service is at least thinking about it. What do you think? He is. He's thinking about it. The shift will be on. Even with Bruce, runners at first and second. Bruce is not a bunter. He has not been asked to do it very often in his career. These fans here are wondering what is going on. This is automatic every time in the Japanese leagues. No bunt, a swing and a miss. Mind you, my first game ever that I played here, seventh inning, we were down 14 to 1 to the Jamiri Giants. Their leadoff hitter gets on. Next batter bunted perfectly. And the stadium went nuts. Applauding. <laughs> yeah, you got to clarify. It would be a different kind of nuts. Back in the big leagues. Bruce, another cut. It's 0 2. Jay Bruce, best I can tell in his long career of more than 1,500 major league games, has successfully put down three. Sacrifice bunts. The last one came in 2014. And he's not now going to be bunting. It's 0 2. 
tie game 12th inning four to four. That one to left center. D Gordon thinking about tagging but it just wasn't quite deep enough to left field. So he stays put. Everybody ever I guarantee you every fan here in the Tokyo Dome who watches Japanese baseball is thinking why did they not bunt? Bob Melvin's coming out and he's going to make the pitching change. So with Encarnacion and Santana lined up a couple of right handers Bookter comes out A's trying to keep this game tied four to four hang with us we'll be back after this. Goes without saying both these teams had to travel a long way to get here to Tokyo for the Mariners the trip was just under uh, 5000 miles for the A's just over at least if they were coming from the folks who were coming from their home cities the players and coaches came from Arizona so it was even longer to get here to the Tokyo Dome. If if we hit rewind on that uh, tape we could track the route that they're going to take as soon as this game is over they're going back home tonight. After this one it's four to four we're in the 12th Ichiro the, the news leaked out during this game we suspected that it might be true but it was uh, confirmed by Buster Olney and others after a, a, a an outlet here in Tokyo first reported it that Ichiro before the game told the Mariners he was going to announce his retirement after this game tonight and that created an even extra buzz in the ballpark we had some tremendous moments with one of the all time greats. And he got his final send off. He is out of the game, and we play on four to four. And Encarnacion takes one inside against Fernando Rodney, the new pitcher for Oakland. Fernando Rodney last season combined between Minnesota and Oakland. You see the numbers right there. We'll feature fastball and changeup. Fastball still in the mid 90s. Hat always tilted. Got the call Rodney did and Carnacion asking Bill Welke are you sure. Two and one. Teams are starting to get some more chances here in extra innings. The A's had a great chance in the 11th couldn't cash it in Mariners with their own opportunity here in the 12th. That one was very similar very similar except it was a change up. And I do not even know how Edwin Encarnacion held up on that one. Great take. Threw him a 2 0 fastball away. Let's see if he goes right back there. That's ball four. Bases loaded. J.B. Wendelkin, Ryan Dahl, Frankie Montas are still left for Bob Melvin in his bullpen. And that's part of these games, part of why there's probably a little, little less stress and pressure on the managers tonight than there would be otherwise because the teams knew that this was just a two game series, so they didn't have to carry on the active roster their extra starting pitchers. They had a fortified bullpen. Domingo Santana on the ground could be two. That Roll. flip was a little high. The oh throw my. is very high. It pulls Pinder off the bag. D. Gordon comes in to score, and the Mariners have gone ahead five to four. I think it really started with oh the flip my. from shortstop. Absolutely, it started there. Slow to deliver that baseball to Profar. Remember, these two are working together for the first time this season. Yes, they had some work during spring training. But right there, Profar thought the same thing. Most likely, I have to rush the throw. Gets the hard ground ball. The decision is made. Going to second, but you see that right there, just the floater. Profar rushing the throw, even though he had enough time, not knowing Santana's speed. Ball sails, and Fernando Rodney, a little frustrated after getting the job done with that ground ball. And there, there were. Obviously a lot of things going on on that. The first thing was the decision that you reference once the ball was hit to shortstop 
Was Marcus Simeon going to come home and cut down the would be go ahead run get the force out there or try for the double play. I think it was the right decision to try right for the decision. double play. Just wasn't a great feed wasn't a great. First move. You have to give that ball to the second baseman with ample time. So we have a run across Mariners have a 5 4 lead. Narvaez is way out in front. And you go back to that play. Maybe Simeon knew that Santana doesn't run well, took his time with it, but Profar probably did not. Then he ends up rushing the throw, stays standing up. No flexion at all in the front knee. The ball sails. A chance for more for the Mariners who have gone ahead. Runner from first goes. Santana, no throw made by Hunley. Which was very high. Well, why not take the base? A hit here could really open it up. That strike three called, frozen. Well, Rodney, I have to say, really did his job, but the A's defense, one little mistake, and it cost him a run in an extra inning game. The Mariners are three outs away from a win in Tokyo, 5 4 as we go to the bottom of the 12. Uh, Ichiro Suzuki has had to wait now for a while after coming out of this game. The night was about him, one of the greatest stars in the history of this sport who told the Mariners before the game today and then the news leaked out as the game was going on that this would be his final game in his career he got the send off that he so richly deserved from his teammates from his coaches and most especially from these fans in Tokyo and that's the headliner from tonight but we have a major league game a regular season game being played Ichiro who won the rookie of the year and the MVP in his first year in the big leagues Ichiro also won two American League batting titles a 10 time all star single season hits record three time silver slugger winner 10 time gold glove winner waiting for the end of this game to announce officially to everybody that this will be his final game. It was the first game for Yusei Kikuchi. He started, it was a long time ago, but made a great Major League debut for the Mariners. Now the Mariners' new closer, Hunter Strickland, is going to try to get the final three outs and finish off what would be a little two-game sweep for Seattle here in Tokyo. Ichiro, not just the uh, single season hits record, the longest streak of 200 or more hits in uh, consecutive years 10 years in a row with 200 or more hits an all time record that one smashed first pitch from Strickland and it is just foul. Remember a lot of these pitchers now first time off the season they're throwing back to back fastball to Pender that ball just barely. From our perspective, it looked closer. From, here, it was, it from was, here, it looked a lot closer. Uh, That's was, why I was like, quiet. I was like, come on, Ed. That was a good three feet of foul. Big time hook on it. Well, Hunter Strickland last year with the Giants. It was an up and down year for him. He is now the closer for this remade Mariners bullpen. Pinder skies one to left, just got under it. Santana for out number one. This would of course have been Edwin Diaz who had 57 saves last year close to the all time record. He's now going to be wearing a Mets uniform so it's Hunter Strickland's job as Nick Hundley his old teammate with the Giants the last couple of years will face Strickland with one out. In the bottom of the 12th Mariners have gone ahead five to four it wasn't officially an error but a little defensive mistake gave the Mariners the run that has put them ahead. Good hard breaking ball. Strickland pitching to his ex teammate from last season in the Giants starting him off with a slider.
Check swing no swing. Now the umpires have uh, done a good job in these two games. We appreciate uh, their help as well. Our partners with uh, NTV here in Tokyo televising locally. With all of their assistance this was an unusual telecast for us the way it was set up technically but NTV made it work for us we greatly appreciate that. Conley strike two swinging I'll tell you once the Seattle Mariner players got to spring training Scott service the analytics department they all met with each of their players. They told them their observations what they can improve on. They also talked to Scott to Strickland and whatever they told them so far what we've seen is a little bit more sliders than in the past a lot more break and he's applied it well yesterday and so far tonight one and two to Huntley and that is strike three called. Pretty good breaking balls from Hunter Strickland. One out away. And Scott Service, like he's saying it. One more before both these teams can go home. The Mariners would go home with a perfect 2 0 record. We understand the folks uh, from first take have begun their morning and they are on ESPN 2 at the moment. We'll send you to them as soon as we are finished here from Tokyo last chance for the A's Jerickson Profar he drives one toward left center field well hit it is at the wall and caught and that's how this opening series in Japan comes to an end now the A's are saying hold on do they wonder whether the ball hit the wall and Santana played a ricochet. Ichiro's already celebrating so the A's want to just make sure and they're going to challenge the A's want to look at this so they don't believe that this was a clean catch for Domingo Santana. <laughs> this is something new right now for the Japanese fans as Ichiro is like what wait a second it's time Bill, to go home Bill Welke saying no nah, you can't say goodbye just yet. Well, somebody with Oakland noticed that right away. And so they are going to take a look at this. We have a replay umpire here inside the Tokyo Dome serving as the fifth umpire of this crew. So now we wait. And now it's official. He caught it. The game is over. The great career of Ichiro Suzuki is over with a smile on his face. You can imagine the throngs gathering now to get ready for the official announcement, which will come any moment. Four hours and 27 minutes here tonight. And how about the start for the Seattle Mariners? We'll talk about Ichiro from now until this, as long as this game is played. I mean, Ichiro is one of the all time legends, but for his current Mariners team, what a start. It's an incredible start for them to come all the way over here with all the emotions that are going over with Ichiro, with Kikuchi. They were able to still get two W's here in Japan. Great start. Great job by their bullpen, which has been a big question mark coming into the season. So Ichiro's career is over. This 2019 opening series in Japan is over. A huge success for everybody involved, and we thank Major League Baseball and everybody who helped put this on a night that we will not forget. Ichiro Suzuki says goodbye here in Japan. And the Mariners get a couple of wins. First take is coming up next. You can join us next Thursday, Orioles, Yankees, as we get the full Major League season started for Eduardo, for Ivan, for Tim, Dave Fleming saying so long here from Tokyo and so long to Ichiro. Come on.